You're not going to believe it. I found the answer. All those years, I should have seen it. There's more. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when I get home. What kind of place is this? What horrible living conditions. Ugh, these beds are filthy. A towel might be useful. It's even more extraordinary when it's lit up. He seems familiar, but I can't quite remember. Hello, I don't believe I know you. What's your name? Lenny. I'm Lenny. Lenny's my name. Well then, you must be Lenny. You wouldn't happen to know my name, would you? Nope. Mom says not to talk to strangers. Lenny, do you know where we are? This is my room. My bedroom. Do you like it? Bedroom? No, I mean the building. What's this place we're in? What's it called? My house. This isn't your house. Yes, it is. Why are you here, Lenny? Can you tell me that? I was very, very bad. Bad? I can't believe that of you, Lenny. What did you do? I, uh... I ate some pumpkin pie. Pie? How could you get in trouble for that? It came from the patch. A pumpkin patch? Where is it? Where... <laughs> Where is everyone, Lenny? Where you should be. You should listen. Mother made them all go away. I must not have heard her. Lenny, where did she tell them to go to? To school. Yeah, she made them go to school. Well, since I didn't hear your mom, can you tell me how to get to school? <coughs> Why is there an alarm going off? What's happening? Mother's coming! Mother's coming! What's he doing huddled in a corner? Trying to hide? Excuse me, do I know you? Your name is... Uh... Martin. Martin, I said. Uh... 
Do you know... Do you know who... Can you tell me my name? How the hell should I know? How can you stand all of them buzzing? Constantly buzzing. What is this place? A nut house, you fool. A nut house? It looks so old. What do you mean? Nut house. Looney bin. Funny farm. What don't you understand? Well, there's a lot I don't understand. For starters, why are you here? Damn bugs are driving me crazy. But I'll find their hive one day. Doc Morgan's a great help. We'll squash them. And that'll be that. What bugs, Martin? I don't see any. Maybe they're not real. Are you serious? These blood-sucking insects are bent on destroying the world. Martin, think about it. How are some bugs going to destroy the world? Well, look at them. These aren't normal bugs. These is robots. Little eeny teeny robots. Where is everyone? Cowards, all of them. When the alarm went off, they left us behind. Probably in on it with the bugs. Wait till Doc Morgan finds out. It's a conspiracy. There's a doctor around here? Doc Morgan? Exterminator. That's what he is. The best there is. He kills bugs. Dead. But they always come back. <laughs> always come back. Looks like some sort of control tower. A power cable. I'd better not touch it with my hands. Stained glass window. Looks like some children. A scarecrow on a stained glass window. Weird. A towel. Might be useful. are held shut by an electronic lock. Hmm, what's wrong with this thing? Hmm, the cables need to be plugged in before I can use the VCR. Can you hear me? It's Dr. Morgan. Your delusions almost took the life from you this time. My face, it's in bandages. Where am I? Who am I? You must have thought you had somewhere important to go when you stole that car. Oh, no. You did a lot of damage to that face of yours in the crash. I'm sorry, I, I can't believe. No apologies. All we need is your best effort. And before you can give us that, you need some rest. Bruce, help our lad back to his room. Don't worry, son. We'll talk again soon. Whoa! That short circuit opened the safe! It's some strange kind of key. But a key to what? Could be answers in here. A memo regarding the tower bridge. Due to recent problems with the generator, all employees are asked to keep the tower bridge extended at all times. It will be extremely difficult to extend the bridge from the outer ring should the power go out. A letter for Dr. Morgan from a Professor Cunningham. 
Something about an ancient key found here in the asylum. The key you describe must be very old indeed. I have found documentation that may link it to Aztec culture. Though we'd have to examine the object carefully here at the Institute in order to confirm this theory. A memo from the Chief of Security. It gives some details about a patient escape. Number 227. The memo says that the West Wing is inadequately contained, and all the patients have been transferred to... the tower cells. Here! But where are they now? Looks like some sort of control panel. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Hey, uh, who are you? Oh my god, don't! <laughs> my god! There's a locking mechanism in the base, but what for? An ancient key. You're... alive! Am I going mad? Listen! Hear the cries of the children! The innocent are dying, and you only think of yourself! Can you not see the light of heaven has dimmed? What... what can I do? Seek the truth! It looks like the statue from the tower. Hey, you big dough! Get out of our life! Come on, Billy! Let's play! You're not supposed to... Okay, okay! Great. A bratty kid with two mouths. Hey, um... Kid, uh... What's your name? My name's Billy. What's yours? I... I can't remember my name. Well, Mother won't let me talk to strangers, so you'd better leave. Where's your mother? I'd really like to speak to her. Mother only talks to us kids, not a big poop head like you. Her hands and face are deformed. Who are you, young lady? My name's Jessie Hatcher. What's yours? I, uh, I can't remember my name. Well, Mother won't let me talk to strangers, so you'd better leave. Where's your mother? I'd really like to speak to her. Mother is everywhere. His face looks like it's melting. 
Hi. What's your name? Marty John. What's your name? Max? Sarah would like to see you now. My name is Max. Oh, I got a cousin named Max. You have the same name as his. But you're not my cousin? I haven't seen any adults in this town. Where are your parents? Where are all of the adults? Um, I have a ball. I can bounce it. Hey, that sure is a nice ball. I used to have one just like it. Really? This one's mine. Why aren't you playing with the others? I like my ball. And ride. Be careful. Mr. Pig is almost broke. Where are we? What town is this? This is Jeanette. G-E-N-E-T. I can spell other words too. A spring pig. Cute. Ouch! Your name is Jesse, right? Mm-hmm. The tic-tac-toe champion. What's your name? My name is Max. Oh, that's a dumb name. That's a rude thing to say. What would your parents say if they heard you talk like that? <laughs> They're not here. And you're not my dad. I don't have to listen to you. Where are your parents? They're all in. Jesse, shut up. He's a grown up. You know mother's rule. What's... Mother's rule. We... we aren't supposed to talk about our folks. If we do, we'll be put in... in the patch. Tell me about the pumpkin patch, Jesse. What's so special about it? No one goes in there. Unless they were bad, like Maria. It's a bad, bad place. I... I don't mean to be rude, but what happened to your face? Huh? Oh, that. Mother did this. Aren't I pretty? I hope to be as pretty as Mother when I grow up. Don't you think I'm pretty? Sure. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> You're very, very pretty, Jesse. My God, what's going on here? What game are you playing? Tic-tac-toe. Wanna play? I'm the best there is. Can you tell me how to play? Well, you put an X and I put down an O. In the box is here. The idea is to get three across, or up and down, or diagonal. If you do that, you win. Let's play a game. Then we'll see if you're as good as you say. <laughs> You probably think you're smart, but you're just a big, stupid boy. A simple kid's game shouldn't be too hard. Ah, uh, you got lucky. Uh-uh, you stink. <laughs> All boys are stupid. All right, let's try that again. Okay, now I'll really beat you. A simple kid's game shouldn't be too hard.
I guess you're not as good as you thought, Jesse. <laughs> I let you win, cause you're new in town. You're pretty smart though, for a boy. I've only been beaten a couple of times before, but that's cause there were all girls. Girls are a lot smarter than boys. Nuh-uh, girls is stupider. Shut up, Billy, you little retard. Which girls have beaten you? Meg and Eileen, they're her bestest friends. You're... Billy, right? Uh-huh. I told you that a zillion times already. Jeez. Have you figured out your name yet, Mr. No Name? Uh, my name is Max. Oh! That's a good name. Better than Mr. No Name. I used to have a goldfish named Max, but my cat ate it. He pooped orange for two days. That's disgusting. Do your parents know you tell stories like that? <laughs> yeah, but they don't say anything. Orange poop, orange poop. Where are your parents? I'm not supposed to tell, says Mother. You can tell me. I'm your friend, right? No. I don't mean to be rude, but what happened to your face? Me? Nothing. Mother says I'm handysome. What's wrong with your face, mister? Is Mother making you handy some too? Uh, no, Billy. I was hurt in an accident. These bandages helped me get better. Billy, that angel statue over there, does it... I mean, have you ever seen it move very often? Stupid Mr. Orange Poop. You must have boogers for brains. Statues don't move. Well, this one did. It was... Well, didn't you see it? It carried me here from far away. I, I mean, it just wrapped its wings around me and... Stop it, mister. You're giving me the creeps. This girl has two wooden legs. Who are you? Megan Johns, but you can call me Peg Leg. That's what all the kids call me. That's mean. I would never call you that. Thanks, mister. You're nice. What's your name? My name is Max. That's a nice name. Hey, now you aren't a stranger. I haven't seen any adults in this town. Where are your parents? Where are, where are all of the adults? Sorry, Max, but Mother won't let us talk about that. Why is that? Mother says that all adults except her are bad, and we shouldn't talk to them. You really like to skip rope, huh, Meg? I'm sorry, but doesn't that hurt with your false legs? What? Oh, my legs? <laughs> It's okay. That don't hurt much. Besides, Mother says that once I'm finished growing, I'll forget all about my legs. Where are we? What town is this? This is home, silly. Adults are bad? I don't understand. Why does your mother distrust all other adults so much? She says that pride leads to their destruction, or something like that. What does that mean? I... Oh, I probably said too much already. I realize this is your home, Meg, but where am I? I mean, doesn't this town have a name? Oh, didn't you see the sign? Hey, Meg, I beat Jessie at tic-tac-toe. She said that you beat her once, too. Ha! Huh, I beat her more than once. I beat her four times. Four times? You must be pretty good. Thanks. This boy looks almost normal. Hi there. Uh, what's your name, kid? My name is Timothy, Timothy O'Toole, but you can call me Timmy. All the other kids call me Timmy. What's your name, mister? 
My name is Max. That's a good name. Now you're not a stranger. I haven't seen any adults in this town. Where are your parents? Where are all of the adults? Mother said that God made them all go away, because we're his special children. Special children? What does your mother mean by that? Mother said that God wanted her to protect his special children, so he sent her to save us. Save you from what? From the disease, of course. Disease? Mm-hmm. The disease of meat. Meat? Is she a vegetarian? What's a vegetarian? It's someone who eats plants, not animals. Well, I think that's what she is. How are the fish biting today? Not so good, but I could sit here all day, so I don't care. You mean you never go into town? Well, only to go to church, but I haven't heard the call to Mass in a long time. The call to Mass? What's that? Father would ring the bell, but since all the adults went away, no one's been able to ring it. Really? How come? Dennis cut the rope so no one can reach it. Somebody needs a driving lesson. I smell gasoline. Damn, useless crap. And I was so sure that I would find some clues in here. child deaths worldwide. Experts are baffled as to the cause of these deaths, which leaves us to wonder, can anyone put a stop to the loss of our children? <sighs> Kid's got an extra arm. What's your name? What's it to you, dumbass? Nothing. Certainly nothing worth getting dunked in the river over, don't you think? Jeez, mister, don't get all bent out of shape. I was just kidding. My name's Dennis O'Toole. What's yours? Uh, my name is Max. Hmm, that figures. What a stupid name! I haven't seen any adults in this town. Where are your parents? Where are all of the adults? <laughs> Mother took care of them. In fact, I'd watch my step if I were you. After all, you're the only adult in town, and Mother don't like adults. Watch my step? I've had enough of you and your little threats, kid. Whoa! Calm down, mister. I was just telling you to be careful, that's all. This kid's just a little more than a baby. Hi there. What's your name, kid? Derwick, what's yours? My name is Max. Hi, Max. I'm Derwick. Uh, yes, I know. I haven't seen any adults in this town. Where are your parents? Where are all of the adults? I don't know. Why are all you kids here in the cemetery? Because Dennis says so. Poor misshapen kid. What's your name? Well, since all the adults went away, everyone calls me Lumpy. Do you have another name? A real name? Well, my real name is Larry, but no one calls me that anymore. What's your name, mister? My name is Max. It's not as cool as my name, but it's okay. I guess that means you ain't a stranger no more. So I can talk to you, right? Uh, right. I haven't seen any adults in this town. Where are your parents? Where are all of the adults? Mother says we're not supposed to talk to anyone about that. Especially you big people. Sorry. Her... 
Her legs are like tree roots. Hello, young lady. What's your name? Eileen Daly. What's yours? My name is Max. That's a nice name. I haven't seen any adults in this town. Where are your parents? Where are all of the adults? They just sort of, well, they just went away. Away? To where? They left you kids all alone? Oh, we're not alone. Mother is here to take care of us. Why are all you kids here in the cemetery? Our leader, Dennis, likes to play hide-and-go-seek here. Can I play a game of hide-and-seek with you? You'd have to ask Dennis, but I'd rather not play right now. I was just going to plant my pretty pumpkins. You like pumpkins, huh? Mm-hmm. I like the pretty orange color. Do you play tic-tac-toe with Jessie? Yeah, she thinks she's the best, but I beat her seven times. Orange, huh? That reminds me of a story that Billy told me. Oh, yuck. Did he tell you that awful cat story? That's gross, huh? Yeah, just like Billy. The boy's face is mottled and leafy. Hi there. What's your name, kid? My name's Marcus. Marcus Williams. What's yours? My name is Max. Hi, Max. I guess you're not a stranger anymore. I haven't seen any adults in this town. Where are your parents? Where are all of the adults? Mother made them go away. Away? To where? Sorry, mister, but I'm not allowed to tell you. Why are all you kids here in the cemetery? Because Dennis likes you here. A crowbar should come in handy. Yuck! A decaying corpse. What a god awful stench! Your name is Dennis O'Toole, right? That's my name! Don't wear it out! Why are all you kids here in the cemetery? Cause we like it here! The other little kids are too chicken to play here! Why? What do you play? They play kid games like tic-tac-toe. We play hide-and-go-seek. And we're the best. Heck, we even have a prize you can win! What makes you think you're the best? Because we have a secret weapon. Really? What is it? If I told you, then it wouldn't be a secret. A prize for winning, huh? What is it? The keys to the town store. There's lots of cool stuff inside. Our fort, our candy, everything. Uh, it's been a while since I played this game. Could you tell me the rules? Yeah. It's so simple, even you can play. Cover your eyes and count to ten. We'll all go hide, and then you try to find us. If you find any of us, we go back to base, the angel at the center of town. If you can find all of us, you get the key. Well, that sounds pretty easy. Ha! Huh. You say that now, but just wait until you try to find us. Can I play a game of hide-and-seek with you? Yeah, if you really want to show everyone what a big, fat loser you are. That's it, Big Mouth. You'd better pray that I don't find you. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
There you are. Schoolhouse. Why are these doors boarded up? A crowbar should come in handy. My God, so many corpses. It's horrible. Decayed bodies. Are these the parents? If I asked the kids directly, it might upset them. There you are. My god. What kind of hiding place is this? The church. A bell. I'll bet it hasn't called anyone to church in a long time. Today's sermon, Psalm 4, verse 51, the gates of heaven. Keep seeing things. An old church organ. The stained glass windows make me feel like kneeling. Aha! There are some files here. And this is a piece about the local preacher, a Reverend O'Toole. The Reverend claimed that the comet was the eye of God, a sign of heavenly anger towards the townspeople. Local man questioned in wife's death. Says that Marilyn Driscoll was found in her bathtub, both wrists cut. The police questioned the husband Jeddah as a matter of standard procedure. A rock. A rock. That should get people's attention. There you are. I doubt the circus will be coming to this town anytime soon. There are some files here. An article about a new star in the sky. Many people saw this star, but an astronomer claims that the star is actually a comet. Article about the annual town pumpkin fair. Supposed to be the biggest yet. Let me know when it starts. Interesting news. Seems that a comet altered its path and headed for Earth. The eye of God lights up the night sky.
a metallic cross. I'll need something to fish it out with. The way appears to be blocked by vines. Aha! A newspaper article. It's an obituary. Marilyn Lee Driscoll, age 32, died Saturday. Husband, Jetta, Daughter, Carol. And son, Lawrence. That wasn't so tough. I found everyone in one fair and square. Now give me the key to the store. <laughs> you big goat! You forgot about our secret weapon! I should have known you would cheat. What kind of crap are you trying to pull? Hey, don't get upset, mister. I told you the rules, I told you about the secret weapon, and you didn't win. What are you talking about? I found all of you. <laughs> you didn't find all of us. What? You didn't find Carol. She's our secret weapon. <laughs> She's the best there is at this game. She's been hiding a long time. Your name's Eileen, right? Mm-hmm. Did you forget already? Dennis said that Carol is the secret weapon in this game. Who is she? <laughs> She's our best player, mister. Well, where is she? Gee whiz, I can't tell you that. Then she wouldn't be our secret weapon. A shovel. It looks like you're all done planting your seeds. Can I borrow your shovel now? Go ahead, I'm all done. Mother will be so proud of me when she wakes up. C. Driscoll, missed dearly by mother. A shovel. Oh my god. This decayed child must be Carol. Dennis's secret weapon. Everyone calls you Lumpy, right? Yeah, it's cause of this hump I got, I guess. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess so, kid. I'm sorry to hear about your mom. But if she's dead, who is this mother that you keep talking about? She's my new mom, and she promised me that she won't ever go away. How can she promise that? I mean, we all, uh, go away. Nuh-uh. Mother said we'll live forever after she's finished with us. I read the town newspapers and saw some articles about a man named Jetta Driscoll. Was he your father? Yeah. I see that you and Carol are, um, very close. Yeah, I'm so happy she's back. Thanks for helping me find her. Uh, sure, I guess.
Oh, wait, you twisted little freak. I dug up your secret weapon. Satisfied? Now hand over the keys. Aw, oh, man. You suck. Here's your damn keys. Thanks, Dennis. The newspapers mentioned a Reverend O'Toole. Are you related to him? Yeah. He's my old man. I'd like to speak to your father. Is he close by? No, <laughs> he's really close. But you can't talk to him. Why not? Because only mother's allowed to. Only mother? You mean you're not allowed to see your own father? Yup. Mother says that they got to learn about raising us kids. So we should leave them alone. Alone where? Hmm. How dumb do you think I am? I ain't no squealer. Is that your father's church across town? Uh-huh. That's St. Michael's church. I'd guess it's a general store. A key. My prize for winning Dennis's Twisted Little Game. An empty old gas can. There are some files here. Hmm. Looks like a comet actually hit ground in this town, causing a landslide to block Route 30, falling bridges, power failures. The rest of the page is burnt away. Another article. Reverend O'Toole sworn in as interim mayor. The Reverend made it illegal to hamper the growth of the vines, saying that the people should Accept punishment for their sins of pride and greed. Due to harsh economic conditions, this will be the final edition of The Observer. Well, there's something else here. Charges of child abuse filed against Jetta Driscoll have been dropped. Now I have a spring pig. Joy. <laughs> hmm. The gate has a combination lock. A big, overgrown pumpkin patch. My god, she's half worm. This girl's eyes are missing. Was she in some sort of accident? Uh, excuse me, little girl, but could I talk to you for a second? Sure, mister. I don't get many visitors. May I ask your name? My name is Maria. Maria Santiago. Where are we? What's the name of this town? There is no town. Not anymore. I haven't seen any adults in this town. Where are they? Where are your parents? I'm sorry, but Mother has forbidden us to talk about them. I keep hearing about Mother, but it doesn't sound like she's anyone's real mother. Who is this person? She's resting right now, otherwise I wouldn't speak to you. You're right, though. She isn't anyone's real mother. She's really... <gasps> what is it, Maria? I think she's waking up. I can't talk anymore. Mother will hear me and, and get awful mad. But... Oh, damn it! Forbidden? But why? Why can't you talk about your parents? Please don't be mad. I'd tell you if I could. It's just that... Well... I'll be punished again if I do. Punished? How? The pumpkin patch. She'll have me put in the pumpkin patch again. It's a terrible place. It doesn't look so bad from here. Once you're inside, everything turns bad. You've 
been in there before? Yes. The others dragged me in there. The other children? They did as they were told. Mother wanted to teach me a lesson. What lesson, Maria? Not to look for our parents. Mother said we should never, ever do that. But I was too curious. Mother saw me. She told the other kids that I was bad. Then she made them put me in the patch. I don't remember much. Just those nasty birds. Black wings. They pecked at my eyes. It hurt a lot. But when the birds were done, Mother took the pain away. That... that that's... horrendous. How could she do such a thing to a child? It's okay. It's not so bad now. I'm kind of used to it. Anyway, once Mother wakes up, everything will be better. Okay? What are you... Please, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I've already said too much. What do you mean, not anymore? There was a town before Mother got here. People were happy. Everything was fine. Before your mother came to town? What do you mean? You're new here. You just don't understand. No, I don't understand. You're only confusing me more. Could you explain it to me? Start at the beginning? I'm sorry. If you want to really understand what's going on, I think that there's lots of newspapers and stuff in the town hall. But I haven't seen them. Come back in a little while and we'll talk some more. I'd show you the way to the town hall, but my eyes... I've read the old newspapers in the town hall, Maria. Oh, good. You found it. What do you want to talk about now? A comet. Is that what happened here? Did the comet somehow make the plants around here grow so wild? Mother told us that the comet was a sign of her coming. A sign that we were special children. The newspapers mentioned a preacher named O'Toole. Did you know him? Yes. He was real scared about the comet. I remember him saying at church that God was mad about the pumpkins and that he was going to punish us for taking advantage of the land. I'll need the right combination to open this. Now, let's see. I guess it's time to check out this patch. Slice and dice, baby. Uh-oh.
Got him. I guess he thought it was better to burn up than fade away. This rock must be the source of all the monstrous plant life. It appears metallic. An old gas-powered generator. Must be out of gas. What a piece of junk. Probably only good for spare parts. It looks like a jumper cable. Might be useful. <laughs> jumper cable. Come on, come on. I can't do that. Disgusting nightmare! So you finally arrived. I suppose it was inevitable. Yet, I hoped that the pumpkin patch would deter your progress. Apparently not. I must admit that I'm intrigued as to how you arrived here. I was certain I'd weeded out your kind before sleep overtook me. Meat secretions hang in the air around your body. They offend my senses. My god, what are you? I am beyond your understanding, human. However, you may call me what the children do. Mother. Mother? I should call you what you are, nothing but a disease! Mind your tongue, human. I am more parent to these seedlings than you or anyone else could be. These aren't your seedlings, they're children. Flesh and blood, don't you see that? I see, and it disgusts me. Animal sacks filled with loose cells. It's a wonder you don't burst. What? An inferior vessel for the spirits of these children. But why have you done this? The children were in danger. Danger from what? You've done more harm than... Than what? You? <laughs> the mate called Jeda showed me how harmful your kind can be, as did the one called Preacher. Jedda, I saw his name on the pumpkin patch sign. What does he have to do with all this? He made me see the evil of your kind. How destructive you are. Jedda preyed upon his own child making her suffer and die. The entire town turned a blind eye to Jeddah's crimes, and I watched. The people's vicious disregard for Carol's safety was no less a crime than her father's. So you killed them? Their own inner chaos would have destroyed them eventually. I only expedited the event. Set 
things in order. Why were you so concerned about Carol? She talked to me when no one would listen. I tried to communicate with them, but Carol's voice was like music to me. She was my favorite, and I failed her. How does the preacher figure into all of this? What could he possibly have done? He was a superstitious fool. He spread paranoia and fear, swaying the others away from rational thought. The humans put their trust and faith in him and followed. When the preacher assured them that Jetta wasn't a real threat to Carol, they listened. If you're as omnipotent as you seem to think you are, then why haven't you weeded me out also? In due time, little meat. For now you are of little consequence to me. My name is Max, not Meat. Your name is meaningless. An animal noise. And you are nothing more than a bag of meat. If you truly feel that way, then why have you spared the children? Aren't they meat too? Yes, and you have seen them bickering and divided. Yet, they are not beyond hope. The children still have some innocence, which with some reconstructing on the cellular level, I will cultivate in order to give them salvation. And you think that you can offer them salvation? What conceit! It is not conceit! After I complete their transformation, the children will be one with me forever. That is their salvation. Transforming them into simple plants? You call that salvation? Simple plants? Insulin meat? You know what your problem is. You lack structure. The cells in your body are practically floating away. It makes me sick to look at you. Everything around you is in chaos. My form is superior in every way to your weak flesh. If my flesh is so weak, then why are you afraid of me? Afraid of you? <laughs> you overestimate yourself. I think you're the one who overestimates yourself, you perverse, bloated egomaniac! You impudent wretch! Ah. Ah. I've got to kill that diseased monster before it kills the children. A wrench courtesy of... well, thanks, Mom. You're Maria, right? That's right. Maria Santiago. 
Yes. I... I know about Mother. I've seen her. She's not human! Don't you understand what she's... Mother is good. Mother is the way. Mother protects us from meat who will harm us. The meat must be killed so that the seedlings may grow. We are all seedlings. Meat? What are you... Maria? What's wrong with you? It's too late, Max. She's strong again. As strong as before. When she took all the adults, I... 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 I can't think straight. I... I... Maria's safe now. They're all safe. Soon all the sickness will be gone, and my seedlings will be one with me. Free to live and grow. You are sick too. Sick with flesh. You need my help. Breathe deep, crude meat thing, and be cleansed. Rubber hose. A rusty wrench. Okay, there we go. Kid has left his fishing rod. From the fumes, I'd guess that the tank is full. Rubber. An empty old gas can. Fishing rod. Yes. Metallic cross charred by lightning. How am I supposed to get there? 
How am I supposed to get there? A full gas can. Children are free of you! Ugh, what a mess. Thank you for freeing us, Max. Now that Mother is destroyed, the children are slowly returning to normal. They've all gone through the tunnel to join the rest of the world. I waited for you. Yes, but where are we going? Max? It's me, Morgan. I'm right here. The asylum? How did I get back here? Those children seemed so real. Did I save them or am I going completely mad? Is he wearing big bare feet slippers? Excuse me, what's your name? Are you serious, man? I'm the king. King of what? King of rock and roll, man. I'm Elvis. The Elvis? But I thought you were, uh, well, you know, dead. No, that was all a hoax, man. The pressure was getting to me, I needed a break. Break from what? All your fame? Fame, drugs, food, you name it. I needed time to relax, sober up, slim down. Know what I mean? Yes. Well, it looks like you've shed a few pounds since that Hawaiian concert. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where is that awful music coming from? I wish I knew, man. That stuff is for the birds. Do you know anything about the other patients? They ain't patients. These are my fans, man. Let me tell you, these are the best fans in the world. Nice tutu, old man. Excuse me, what's your name? Skippy! Do you know anything about the other patients? Do you know anything about the other patients? Very funny, old man. Very funny, old man! <laughs> Where is that awful music coming from? I don't know, Q-Tip. Q-Tip? Yeah! Your big cotton head looks like it belongs in a big ear! <laughs> Ugh, smells down there. That guy looks like he's gonna eat me. Excuse me, what's your name? Stan Dombrowski, don't forget it. Where am I? The courtyard. I'm not crazy, I shouldn't be here. Shut up before I pound you one. I know this will sound nuts, but I was just in this weird little town where a, a huge alien plant killed all the adults, but not the kids. Ah, uh, shut up! Where is that awful music coming from? Doc's doing some kind of test in the observation room. Oh? What kind of test? How should I know, maggot? Quite a big fellow. Excuse me, what's your name? Jeez, Max. It's the same as it was yesterday and the day before that. 
I'm Bruce. Bruce Chambers, remember? Man, that wreck must have really rattled your brain. A car wreck? Yeah. Taking that nurse's car for a joyride wasn't the brightest thing you've ever done. I mean, now your face is all messed up and you can't remember squat. Where am I? You've been here before, don't you remember? No, this place isn't familiar at all. It's the courtyard, Max. You like it here. I'm not crazy. I shouldn't be here. Now just calm down, Max. Calm down. But I'm not crazy. Sure you're not, Max. Sure. Where is that awful music coming from? Oh, the observation room. Dr. Morgan said that he was doing some auditory experiments. Whatever that means. I know this will sound nuts. But I was just in this weird little town where a, a huge alien plant killed all of the adults, but not the kids. You're right. You, you mean you believe me? No, I mean it sounds nuts. Just take your pill, Max, and you'll feel better. I wonder what's on his mind. Excuse me, what's your name? John Whitefoot, Max. Don't you remember? No, I'm sorry. I'm not crazy. I shouldn't be here. That's a familiar story around here, my friend. Where am I? The asylum, of course. In the courtyard. We had to evacuate the tower cells because of the explosion. What explosion? The generator. It was supposed to be repaired this week. I guess they were a little too late. Oh, what about all the patients up there? I'm afraid you were the only one who survived, my friend. I'm the only survivor? My god! How many people died up there? I'd say 15 or so. The fire spread quickly after the second explosion. Then there was no way to reach them in time, but how did you manage to escape? If I told you, you'd think I'm really insane. Try me. I'd like to know how you survived this disaster. I know this will sound nuts, but... I was just in this weird little town where a, a huge alien plant killed all the adults, but not the kids. I see. Ah, you must think I'm as loony as the others. No, that's not true. I have my own theory on what could have happened to you. What's your theory? Well, I think that maybe your mind couldn't handle the thought of you abandoning those who needed help, so you constructed a world to hide in inside your mind, until it was safe to come back. The town represented the tower, the children were the patients, and the missing adults represented the doctors and other authority figures who weren't around to help. Huh, maybe you're right, but it all seemed so real. Your mind is capable of wondrous things, Max. In your head, it was real. Where is that awful music coming from? Dr. Morgan is testing a few theories on how music affects the patients. He's conducting his research in the observation room. What kind of weird trees are these? What kind of weird trees are these? Why is that woman licking her lips? I feel very sane in comparison to her. Excuse me, what's your name? My name is Vera. I think it sounds nice. I ate my husband with carrots and rice. Do you know anything about the other patients? They'd be yummy in my tummy. What do you mean by that? Chop them all up. Put them in a pot, add some potatoes, and see what you've got. Uh, okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Dried up and depressing. Whoa, those are some big doors. How sad she looks. Doctor? Are you my doctor? Welcome back to the States, Max. I've already managed to assemble a team of top researchers at Mercy, but I'm especially glad that you finally decided to accept my offer. Dr. Law.
Doctor, are you all right? I am a doctor. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Thank you. Yes, I am a doctor, but I don't work here. Oh, I was hoping you were a new doctor. Since my friend stopped talking to me, I've been so lonely. I need someone to cure him so he could talk to me again. Where do these big doors lead? It sounds like someone's inside. Preacher Bob is giving a sermon inside. I wanted to go into the chapel myself, but the doors are stuck. I can't budge them. Well, how did the preacher get inside if the chapel doors are stuck? He must have had help from his little lackey, Norm. Who is your friend? Crag. Well, what's wrong with him? Does he have laryngitis? I... I don't know. Maybe. All I know is that he hasn't visited or talked to me in a while. Has Crag gone away? Maybe he was released from the asylum and didn't tell you. No. He wasn't a patient here. He just used to visit me by the fountain on sunny days. Where is that awful music coming from? Oh, you can hear it too. Thank goodness. I thought I was imagining it. Where is it coming from? Um, I don't know. Why are you so lonely? I mean, there are other people here to talk to. I don't like them. They're all crazy. Crag was different. He was tall, dark, and handsome. He thought I was pretty. I'll bet you are pretty, under that heavy hood. Why do you hide your face? Since Crag stopped visiting me, I don't want to show my ugly face to anyone. Oh, stop talking like that. You're not ugly. You're just being polite. You don't fool me. Seems rather eccentric. Excuse me, what's your name? My name? Disciple Norman, this lost sheep seeks the truth. Seek the truth, preacher? Amen, Norman. I go by many names, my child, but you may call me Preacher Bob. Your parishioners seem a little, um, wooden. The lost sheep doesn't recognize the flock, Brother Norman. Open his eyes, Father. Amen to that. My flock is special in the eyes of the Lord, my son. Right now, they sit motionless in deep prayer. So strong is their devotion that they appear to be made of wood to the common man. But in truth, they are as alive as you and I. I'm okay, if you say so. You seem to be quite, well energetic about the topic of stealing. Why is that? Oh, the wicked are among us, my friend. They spread their vile ideas and sinful thoughts like a cancer. And now, the sinners have desecrated the sanctity of his house. Desecrated? How did they do that? Ah, evil thieves slipped into his great house and performed a terrible deed. With the devil's hands, they stole a most holy of holy symbols. What has our society come to when the wretched pawns of Satan feel free to run rampant in Bob's house? Can I hear an amen? Amen, preacher. Thank you, Norman. What did this holy symbol look like? Maybe I'll come across it. 
They stole no less than the sacred cross of the church, my son. A golden testament to his good word. Why'd they chain his hands to his feet? Excuse me, what's your name? I am Saint Norman, disciple of Bob. Disciple of Bob? What faith is that? It is the truth. Bob's word is truth. He is the eyes and ears of God. Oh, glorious and most holy of Bob's. Bob is the most Bob of all. Hallelujah! Praise be to Bob! The preacher seems to be pretty riled up. Is he always like this? No, but one of the evil sinners took something very valuable from the house of Bob. Therefore, we are watchful of all who would approach. Stay back! But all I want to do is talk to the preacher. Then do it from here. The preacher seems to be interested in the sin of stealing. Did something happen? Oh, a most foul and wicked occurrence has befallen our most majestic and glorious house of worship. A sinful calamity of wretched thievery and deception has spirited away the holiest of holy tokens from the house of Bob. Okay. Thanks for clearing that up for me. He looks way too attached to that fish. Excuse me, what's your name? <coughs> uh, sir, yes sir. Eh? Who the hell are you? Leave me alone. Can't an old man get any rest around this ship? Where is that awful music coming from? <coughs> uh, quit talking to me. I need to sleep off me hangover from shore leave. Looks like a doctor. What's he writing? Anatomical diagrams. Must be part of Morgan's work. A radio. Wonder if I can get any news from the outside world. An old piece of equipment, but it seems to be working fine. Hello? You must be Dr. Morgan. Huh? Oh. We thought we'd lost you in the fire, Max. Where have you been? What fire? What happened? The generator exploded. <sighs> Too bad about all of those others up there in the tower. We could only save so many. Others? What do you mean? Don't you understand, Max? The fire. It wiped out all of the cells in the tower. Everyone inside. You're lucky to be alive. No one seems to be bothered by this. Does anyone know what happened to make the generator explode? We haven't discovered the cause yet, but of course we're concerned about all the patients. Right now we're trying to keep everyone calm and pleasant. Don't want them to dwell on disturbing things, do we? No, surely not. I... I was somewhere else for a while. Well, it's good that you're safe, Max. But you seem to get into trouble whenever you go away. I've told you before that you need to stay in control if you expect to get well. What are you writing, Doctor? I'm conducting an experiment. The effects of different types of music on all the patients. I didn't just go away in my mind, Dr. Morgan. I was in an actual place. A small town with children. They were real. They... Now, Max, don't get all excited. I can have one of the orderlies restrain you if necessary. Will it be necessary, Max? No, I'm fine. I want to get well, Doctor, but I have so many strange thoughts, unanswered questions. Curiosity is a good thing, Max. I wish I had some answers for you. Perhaps we can talk later, after my work here is done. A record. Bella Donna in A flat.
a record. Bella Donna in A flat. Very disturbing. Yet I can't look away. Aha! Look what Skippy had under his tutu. A holy symbol. I've found your lost symbol, preacher. What's that? Praise the Lord indeed! Praise the Lord! Come forward, my son. For your performance of a miracle in our accursed times, I dub thee Saint Max of the House of Bob. Here is thy staff of righteousness. Lean on it, whilst you walk on the path of the Lord. Hallelujah! Thanks. I'll, uh... <clears throat> I'll use it for the good of mankind. Hallelujah! Amen! Dried up and depressing. Some sort of control box for these water lines. I'll need something to pry it open. An old broom. This is a confusing mess. These pipes, they must control the water flow to the fountain.
It looks so much nicer when it's filled. I fixed your fountain. Has your friend returned? Oh, yes. I'm so happy. Crag has returned. Can't you see him? Isn't he glorious? The reflection is moving. spirit has been so dry. I do not know you, sir, but I thank you. What is your greatest wish? I wish that I could see my sister again. Max? Sarah would like to see you now. Better? I don't think I can go to the circus this year. We'll go next year. <laughs> can you do me a favor, Max? Dolly, the one Dad won me the last year at the circus, Mr. Clown, could you get it for me in the toy box? Oh yeah, sure. I can't find it, Sarah. I can't... I can't find it. I can't find it. I can't find it. What's happening to me? <gasps> I can see everything through these. He's got a big red nose like Santa. Well, bless my soul! How on earth did you get here, little girl? I don't know, mister. All I remember is looking in the water and then this flash of light. The next thing I knew I was here. I'm kind of scared because I don't remember much. Now, now, no need to be scared, my dear. Using my world-renowned powers of deduction, I'd say that you were in a boat and fell overboard. The tide swept you up and plopped you down here, safe and sound. Why, I'm sure your family is looking for you as we speak. My name's Sarah. What's yours? What? Why, I'm Antonio Baldini, genius showman and ringmaster extraordinaire. Where am I? You don't know. Then you're in for quite a treat, little girl, because directly behind me is the most fantastical spectacle this world has to offer. Huh? Can it be that you've never heard of the world-famous Baldini Brothers' amazing traveling circus? Say it's not so. Why, only a few dollars will open the doors of magic, wonder, and grotesquerie. Oh, but I have no money. Hmm. Tell you what, my dear, since times are tough and the crowd is, um, uh, a little thin this time of year, I'll give you a free pass to the Squid Squash game. If you're lucky, you might win some tickets. Oh, thank you, Mr. Baldini. Think nothing of it, my dear. And now, if you'll excuse me, little lady, I have a circus to run. 
Hey, you maggots! We have a customer! The show must go on! I've never heard of this game before. Neat! His arm is a fishing pole! My name's Sarah. What's yours? Well, I'll be. Antonio wasn't crazy after all. There really is a customer. My name is Carl Rice, but you can call me Ishmael. <laughs> hmm. I operate this squid squash game. Squid squash? How do you play? Oh, it's quite simple, little girl. It's a test of might. After you give me your tickets to play, I'll give you the anchor. You heave it up, and then squash the squid head here as hard as you can. That will send a blob of ink up its tentacle. The higher it goes, the more tickets you win. Why do I need more tickets? You need them to go on the rides, of course. Who lives in that big spooky house on the other island? No one that I know of, although some of us believe that it's haunted. Really? Yes, I personally saw a ghost child in the attic window when I used the binoculars. I never saw a circus on an island before. Neither have I, but isn't this the best? I hated all that travel in landlocked towns. I always dreamed of a life by the sea, but I never thought it would come true. Now I eat as much fish as I can catch. May I play, please? Sure, if you have three tickets. I have a squid squash pass that Mr. Baldini gave me. That's good enough. Here you go. Whee! <laughs> Look, I have some game tickets. May I play, please? Sure, if you have three tickets. I have enough tickets. Splendid. Here you go. Sure, if you have three tickets. I have enough tickets. Splendid. Here you go. <laughs> I've never heard of this game before. Look, I have some game tickets. May I play? Please? Sure, if you have three tickets. I have enough tickets. Splendid. Here you go. <laughs> Look, I have some game tickets. May I play, please? Sure, if you have three tickets. I have enough tickets. Splendid. Here you go. <laughs> These houses look so sad. Like they're going to fall down any minute. Hey, another kid! My name's Sarah. What's yours? Wow! Another kid! That's swell! Even if you are just a girl. My name's Sean. 
Are we the only kids here? Yeah, it sucks. I get real lonely all by myself. I don't have anyone to play with. Is this section of the island your home now? Yeah, if you can call this a home. It's just a bunch of cruddy shacks. Where's all the other families? Lima folks are all that's left. There used to be a lot more, but they kept disappearing. What's happening? No one knows for sure. We think it's that monster. Monster? Yeah, that squid thing. My dad says it's just a matter of time before it gets us all. Oh, I don't want to be eaten. If you're so lonely, why don't you go to the circus? There's lots to do there. Mama says I can't. She says the circus is for evil folks. And they brought the flood down on us with their sin and ways. That's silly. How could they have? I don't know. Mama knows the best. Do you always obey your mama? Most of the time. What do you mean, most of the time? Well, I snuck out and went over to the big top one night, even though Mama said not to. It was pretty boring. Most everybody was sleeping, except the strong man, who was writing some sap of love poems or something. They were pretty bad. I remember one went like this. Oh, Inferno, you make my heart burn out. <laughs> Oh, he looks so sad. My name's Sarah. What's yours? My name is Colin O'Leary and my wife here is Martha. What happened to the rest of the town folk? Most of them were killed in the flood. A few survivors, like me family, came up here to find shelter. Where are they? I don't see anyone but your family. We're all that remain. That squid thing has been picking us off one by one. But how can it? We're high up from the water. Since it's been in the open water, it's grown to almost triple its original size. At night sometimes, I've seen its long tentacles probing the ground, searching for us. Can't you do anything? I am afraid not. We're all doomed. What happened to the town? A flood. The old prospect dam just beyond Grandview Point finally burst after years of neglect. How did that happen? It was just sort of forgotten over the years. Uh, we knew that it needed repairs, but we took it for granted. Thought it would last one more year. After all, a town only has so much money to spend, and other things always seemed to be more important at the time. I guess we were wrong. I met your son. He's nice. Ah, uh, Sean? Ah, uh, he's a good lad. Although I wish his mother wouldn't baby him so much. An oil can. She must be cold. My name's Sarah. What's yours? Where'd you come from, you little imp? I haven't seen you around here before. I just arrived here. I don't quite remember how, though. That's a convenient story, isn't it? Bah! Heaven help us, the sinners are breed and mar their kind. They're as evil as the rest of those godforsaken freaks. I'm not a freak. I'm just a little girl. <laughs> you don't fool me, you little devil. I know the ways of Beezlebub. You can alter your appearance at will. Why, you're probably in league with the watery abomination that's killing us all off one by one. Abomina... What? Oh, stop pretending as if you don't know, you wicked little specter. I'll not fall into your web of lies. Your kind brought about the damnation of our town with your vulgar display of profanity. Your husband is a very nice man. Husband? You mean this doppelganger? Bah! He's not my husband. Then why are you standing here with him? Don't smart off with me, you poisonous serpent. You know as well as I that if I were to turn my back on him, he'd eat my brain like a grapefruit. I met your son. 
He was... Stay away from my child. Or up here, you like a potato, you ratted fiend. I don't care if you drag me down to the eternal pits of hell, but I'll be damned before I let you harm one hair on his head. Mr. Baldini. Why, hello, Sarah. Are you enjoying the fabulous circus? I guess so. But it's kind of spooky. That it is, my dear. But is there no fun in fright? No beauty in terror? Look more closely, my dear, and see the sublime wonder of every attraction. Ugh, Pooh, he stinks. My name's Sarah. What's yours? For Flipper. Do you like it here at the circus? Oh yeah, this is my dream. All I got as a prop is this freaking fish. Why don't you use something else? Oh, what else is there? I used to get stuff from the crowd, but there is no stinking crowd. This circus sucks. Poor sad little clown. I hope she doesn't throw one of those at me. My name's Sarah. What's yours? What's it to ya, you little snot? You don't have to be so mean. I was just asking. I was just asking. Ha! Huh. My name is Trixie. Try to remember it. Do you like it here at the circus? Are you for real? This blows. The only enjoyment I get these days is creaming my stupid brother. I don't think that's very nice. Shut up. I don't remember asking you about what you thought, you shrimp. Boy, you aren't a very friendly clown. I thought clowns were supposed to be happy and nice. Is that so? Well, most clowns aren't stuck in a run-down circus on an island, waiting to get eaten by some giant freak. What do you mean, waiting to get eaten? What freak? The goddamn squid. I knew it was bad news the day Antonio brought him. Christ, he ate my dog. The first day he was here. Poor oh, Mr. Pooper. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry? Oh, that's great, kid, but it won't bring back my dog. You get away from me before I nail you with a pie. My name's Sarah. What's yours? Simon. Do you like it here at the circus? No, my sister is a real pain in the ass. Why is she so mean to you? Oh, I don't know. She was always kind of mean, but when her dog died, man, that pushed her over the edge. Such a beautiful costume. Wow, do you really breathe fire? Do you, Jennifer, take this man, Max, to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do breathe fire, that's right. What's your name, little girl? My name's Sarah. What's yours? Well, my real name's Jennifer Lang. But you can call me by my stage name. Inferno. That's a pretty costume. Why, thank you. You're just the sweetest little girl. You're like the daughter I always wanted. Why don't you have one? My husband and I never had the chance to start a family. What happened? He and the other performers were trying to reach the other island when they were attacked by that squid freak. I didn't go because I get seasick easily. He said he'd go check it out, 
And if it was safe, he'd come back for me. He never came back. I'm sorry. That's all right, dear. You didn't know. I just wish I had someone to pass down my secret of fire breathing to. Oh, me, me! Please teach me! Hmm... I don't know. You're awfully young. Please! Well... Okay. But before we get started, you'll need some fuel. I'm running low on my own stuff. Oh my, what big arms he has. My name's Sarah. What's yours? Mino Gino, strongest man alive. Yeah. Wow, you sure got lots of muscles. Yeah, I used to have a lot more, but I just kind of let myself go since the flood. I know you're the one writing love poems to Inferno. Why don't you just tell her? If you love her, you should let her know. Uh, what? I... Uh, uh, no! <laughs> oh, uh, oh, crap. Uh, uh, how did you figure it out? I mean, I'm afraid to tell her. Afraid? A big guy like you? Yeah, uh, yeah. I could bend a steel bar around my neck, but I'm scared of telling her how I feel. But why? Uh, she won't take me seriously. She thinks I'm just a big dummy. I don't know how to really prove my love. This man has pictures all over his body. Oh, wow. Look at all the pictures. Yuck, the needle doesn't look very clean. It says rubbing alcohol. Ew, smells like clown breath. My name's Sarah. What's yours? Oh, ain't you just precious. As if it ain't bad enough being stuck on this freaking island. Now I gotta wet nurse some little breath. You're mean! Yes, yeah, so what? When you's coming to Wilbur Smith's wagons, you play by my rules, kid. Ooh, can I have a tattoo? What? Ha! Ah, come back in about ten years, kid. Tattoo is only for my adult customers. Ooh, those look sharp. Don't touch! It ain't for little brats like you to play with. May I have a bottle of rubbing alcohol? Inferno is going to teach me how to breathe fire. She is, is she? Ain't you a little young to do that? No, I'm almost eight and a half. Oh, uh, uh, hell, why not? I sure as hell ain't using it. And a buttload of this crap just sitting around going to waste. Knock yourself out, kid. Where are all your customers, mister? Well, you ain't the brightest bulb in the string, is ya? There ain't no customers. We're stranded on this crappy island. The only new human being to land on this rock since the flood is you. And you're too freaking young for me to ink. That was a big flood, huh? No, it was a little tiny flood. Now quit asking me stupid questions. Do you drink this stuff? What? Of course not! I use the stuff for cleaning the customer's skins before I tattoo them. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing, you little thief? Hands off! Oh, poo. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wow, they have games. I'll knock them down. One ticket per throw. I have enough tickets. Give it your best shot, little girl. Try not to hurt yourself. Ha ha ha. Oh, poo. What a wimpy toss. Take a powder, little girl, and let the men through. I'll knock them down. One ticket per throw. I have enough tickets. Give it your best shot, little girl. Try not to hurt yourself. Ha ha ha. Holy crap! What an arm! You busted up my pins! A bowling pin. rubbing alcohol. Will this work? Sure. Now let's see, what else do you need? First off, I'll give you one of my old fire batons. Second, you can light it here in my fire barrel. That should be it. Are you ready? Watch me carefully, and then you try it. Okay. Okay, now you try it. You did it! You're a natural! I know who's been sending you love poems. What? How did you find out I was getting them? I haven't told a soul. I can't tell you how I found out, but I know that Gino the Strongman is sending them. Oh no! That big oaf! Ugh! My goodness. He was dating half the girls from the High Wire Act before the Flood. How can I take that man seriously? What if he tattoos your name on his arm? No, oh, I don't know. If he were willing to do that, maybe it would be a start. <laughs> Just between you and me. I've been awfully lonely since my husband went away. Like you? Yeah, they, yeah. I could bend a steel bar around my neck, but I'm scared of telling her how I feel. But why? Yeah, she won't take me seriously. She thinks I'm just a big dummy. I don't know how to really prove my love. How about a big tattoo of her name on your arm? Hey, that's not such a bad idea. If that don't prove how serious I am, then I don't know what is. can juggle with only one arm. My name's Sarah. What's yours? Lefty, for obvious reasons. You're very good. I am, aren't I? <laughs> I can juggle anything. Really? Yeah, but I'm getting bored. No one challenges me anymore. Aha! Hey, finally a challenge. Thanks, little girl. Here's a present for you. Whoop! Thanks! You're welcome!
This must be for the merry-go-round, but it's all rusted up. It looks fun, but the animals scare me. An oil can. Whee! <laughs> I can't go that way. Step on up to the sign, Twerp. Spanky will say if you goes in or not. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Throw this one back in the water, Spanky. She's too small. Where's the nose? It's a red rubber juggling ball. Okay, Shrimpo, step up to the sign and Spanky will... What the... Huh. I guess you're okay, Stretch. I guess he runs the fun house. My name's Sarah. What's yours? Oliver Tweed. And I may say that I have never seen so little as Sarah in my life. You're small, kid. S.M. All. Ha de ha ha. Who's that clown on the roof? That's Spanky the Clown. He sits on the roof so he can see far and wide. How many tickets to get in? Five tickets, kiddo. I don't know how you did it, but you grew up real quick. That's the damnedest thing I ever saw. Look, I have some game tickets. Thanks, Squirt. The House of Horror awaits. Smells funny. My name's Sarah. What's yours? Well, I'll be <laughs> a leprechaun. Where's your pot of gold, little leprechaun? <laughs> I'm not a leprechaun. I'm a girl. Ah, uh, you don't fool me, leprechaun. <laughs> My name is Laughing Larry. <laughs> Show me to your pot of gold. Do you like it here at the circus? No, sir. <laughs> Nothing beats waiting to die of starvation or being eaten alive by some freak! <laughs> oh, let the good times roll! <laughs> Don't you guys have enough food? Uh, maybe enough for a month or so. But once a giant squid eats all the fish around here, we're screwed. <laughs> You can help us, can't you, little leprechaun? You can... <laughs> That's crude! 
Eaten alive, you mean? That squid's gonna eat us all, I tell you! We're all doomed! <laughs> he didn't have to draw the clown to drink! <laughs> She has a crystal ball. Hello, my name is... Sarah. Wow, you knew! Of course I did. I'm quite skilled in the mystic arts, my child. My name is Lady Ivana. Would you tell me my future? Normally I would charge you. But with the way things are, I see no point in it. Come closer. I will need to see your palm. I see that you are far from home, and that you are not who you appear to be. You possess a solution to an important problem, although outside forces conspire against you. How unusual. Your hands tell the stories of someone easily three times your age. Well, I must rest now, but I will give you one final piece of advice. On your way home, beware the pit of darkness. You can only pass through safely when you have sought out the wand, flask, and reflection. Ooh, wow! They're connected. My name's Sarah. What's yours? My name's Matt, and my sister's name is Ashley. You're connected. That's what Siamese twins are, Sarah. He looks like Mr. Potato Head, put together wrong. My name's Sarah. What's yours? Stuart Limkin, my good child. A purveyor of earthly oddities, if you will. A peddler of the perverted beasts that lurk in the shadows of your mind. I am a collector of freaks, and I humbly welcome you to my monument of monstrosities. Where do the freaks come from? Does it really matter, child? They have been assembled here for your entertainment, kept safely behind iron bars so you can observe at your leisure. I've heard that one of your freaks got loose during the flood, and now he's eating everyone who goes in the water. The forces of Mother Nature are not mine to wield, my girl. During the Great Calamity, Iggy took the opportunity to free himself from the shackles of man and returned once more to his watery domain. Who am I to judge this misunderstood creature? How many tickets to get in? A mere five tickets. Half of ten, and one less than half a dozen. A small price to pay to see what few will encounter in the space of a lifetime. Look, I have some game tickets. Thank you. Now, step lively, little girl, for the gallery of the grotesque awaits. He 
she's all bendy. My name's Sarah. What's yours? I am Pretzul, the master of elasticity. Ooh, can you light up a light bulb? What? No, no, not electricity. Elasticity. What does that word mean, mister? That means uh, I can twist and stretch myself into many different shapes. How long have you been a freak in the circus? For many years now. I've seen quite a few freaks come and go, but that squid boy was the worst of the lot. Hmm, it's locked. I can't tell if he's a man or a big dog. My name's Sarah. What's yours? Timber. Go away, kid, before I eat you. What a terrible thing to say. I was just being friendly. If you want to be friendly, release me from this damn cage. If I let you out, you'll eat me. You said so yourself. Promise. I, I promise not to e if you let me out. How could I trust you? You look like you'd eat the first thing you get your hands on. Uh, no, not you. I, I want... I smell bones. Uh, sweet scent of marrow. Uh, driving me mad. Uh, I'm starving. Uh, I want out. Will you lead me to the bones? You can smell bones? Where are they? I haven't seen any on this entire island. Buried deep or underground. I can smell them. I can. I'll dig them up. Gee, I don't know. Oh, uh, please, kid. I'm dying in this wretched cage. Uh, I need out. Why doesn't Stuart just open your cage? Doesn't he have a key? Uh, he lost. Uh, damn, Stuart lost it. Uh, need to pick it open now. Yuck. The needle doesn't look very clean. That's it. Oh, three, three. Thank you. Bones. Dig him up. Ow. Just a bunch of dry twigs. A broken piece of mirror. I hope I don't get bad luck. Huh? They're burning!
Inferno says I can use the baton to breathe fire. That squid monster's in here somewhere. teach you to play nice. Ugh. That'll teach you to play nice. That looks hot. <gasps> Max, come upstairs. There's nothing you could do, son. It's not your fault that you couldn't find it. Come on. Your mother wants you to help her in the kitchen. Okay, Dad. Stephen, stop that. It's not done yet. No, oh, come on. I'm starving. When will it be ready? Oh, the same time as it is every other day. Six o'clock and you know it. Now shoot! All right, I'll be in my study until six o'clock. <gasps> Creepy, it's making me nauseous. What a wonderful old clock. It's locked. Oh, poo. Stephen, why do you do this to yourself? I just miss her, Diane. I miss her a lot. We all do, honey. But torturing yourself watching old videotapes every night isn't the answer. Come to bed. It's getting late. I guess you're right. Hey, I can watch a movie. A brass key. Wonder what it's for.
A brass key. Wonder what it's for. The clock is open. Now I can move the hands. He's a big ghost. A silver key. It's all shiny. Here's a videotape. It says, Home Movies. Here's a videotape. It says, Home Movies. <gasps> Dad, this is my secret hiding place. You're not allowed up here. Hmm. Tell you what. I'll turn this thing off if you give me a big hug. Well, okay. As long as you don't tell Max where this is. <laughs> okay, okay. Now where's that big hug? <laughs> Love you, Daddy. Love you too, Pumpkin. Hmm. Oh, poo. It's locked. A silver key. What a mess. Hey, that's where the key is hidden. Wow, doesn't that look fun? Whee! <laughs> I bet there are all kinds of games and toys in there. Ooh, this key is gold. This is too creepy. What a neat dolly. I'll call him Mr. Clown. You found it after all these years. I'm sorry it took so long. I'm so sorry. Don't be sad.
Xanax. I thought... I thought I let you down when you needed me most. No, don't think that. You, you could never let me down. You're my hero. He hero? You're trying to save all those kids. I know you can do it. I love you. I, I love you too. Don't worry. I'll watch over him. Goodbye, Sarah. It's time for me to face the future. Rest well. Just a child. Could it have died here? This gate is shut tight. What could be so important inside? looking fellow? Where do I know him from? Impressive, isn't it? Yes. The artist really captured his strength in this pose. I'd introduce you to him, but he's, um, visiting my mother. She's been feeling run down lately, so my father thought it best that she get some rest at the clinic. I guess we should be going. We don't, uh... Jacob! I wasn't expecting you. I assumed with finals coming up next week that you'd be spending your time in the library. Instead, I find you here, wasting valuable time. I've more than prepared for the finals, Father. You needn't be concerned. I'll do just fine. You'll do just fine? Fine. Is that your goal? I thought I taught you better than that. Anyone can do fine. I don't want you to be just like every other student at medical school turns out. Remain focused on what is important, Jacob! Yes, Father. Feel dizzy. Huh. A pipe valve. Strange thing to hide behind a painting. A radio. Wonder if I can get any news from the outside world. Today the world mourns as children who successfully responded to the hope drug begin to die. This clock is running counterclockwise. The time is one o'clock and the alarm is set to eight. What a strange device. I wonder what it controls. Doesn't seem to be working. I must need power first. There's a hexagonal hole at this pipe junction. Huh. Pipe valve. See if that accomplished anything. What a strange device. I wonder what it controls. It seems that the rotating electromagnet is linked to the stone weight, but what is the machine's purpose?
Oh my god, it looks like a slaughterhouse. Here, let me help you. God, such an idiot. Patience is the key, Max. Never let the problem get the better of you. You know, I wasn't always this brilliant. <laughs> I don't believe you. Oh, I used to botch my lab tests constantly. But I stuck with it and learned from my mistakes. You're my brightest student, Max. And you have the most potential out of all your classmates. Now come on, we still have a lot of work to do. I wish I understood. Oh god, it's terrible. How could anyone describe such atrocities so, so clinically? Hmm. The local authorities are becoming increasingly suspicious of events here at the asylum. To ensure that my research continues unabated, I must rewrite the locking code for the back lab, and move the subject's bodies down to the crematorium before the sheriff arrives for an inspection. The chalkboards must also be washed clean, for they contain the encrypted codes... Hey, Dr. To... Morgan, uh, yeah, we looked everywhere, but we ain't been able to find them. What? That's the third time this week! Uh, but I mean, uh, I mean, maybe... Spare me your insight. You're pathetic. A man cannot vanish into... <sighs> Both of you. Get this wretch out of here. He's too damn old for my purposes. As for our missing patient, I'll find him myself. Yeah, but what about this stuff? Uh, shouldn't we ought to clean up here? I mean, before the inspection, I mean... I'm uh, aware of it. We'll take care of this mess after we find him. I have a feeling there's a message hidden in this rambling mess. I stand at a crossroads. Shall I venture forth to unravel the mysteries that lurk beneath the mundane flesh, or turn back in fear of what I may find? At times I feel as though the weight of the world rests upon my weary shoulders. Lacking any sense of direction, I have blindly followed in the footsteps of those who walked before me. Valiant, though my intentions may have been, I was powerless to stem the tide of insanity that washed against the shores of the asylum. Although conventional medicine has yielded a few encouraging results, I see no indication that an answer will be found using those methods. The time for conservative medicine has passed, and a new approach is necessary. Outside of the mainstream, with scalpel in hand and hope in my heart, I now prepare to tread upon the virgin soil of the mind. No longer bound by the archaic standards of traditional medicine, I feel reborn. Aha! Uh -huh. I have a feeling there's a message hidden in this rambling mess. Experiments 1 and 2 were complete failures. Unexpected complications during my exploration into the brains of the test subjects regrettably cost them their lives. The loss of a few lives is negligible when compared to the benefits that a cure may bring. 
Obviously, I was in air when I thought the root of insanity grew from the brain itself. Housed elsewhere within the complex frame of the human body lies the key, but where? There are so many dark avenues to explore that I hardly know where to begin. Humbled by this daunting task, I need time to regroup before I renew my search for this elusive prey. Years of research have taught me to be patient, else all could be lost in a reckless pursuit for the solution. Not from here. I have a feeling there's a message hidden in this rambling mess. I search in vain for the elusive solution to this, a most intriguing puzzle. Evading me the way a mouse does a cat, the source of insanity remains hidden from me. Darting from flesh to muscle, muscle to bone, and back again to the fortress of the mind, this evil seems always to maintain one step ahead of me. How can I trap what I cannot see? Surely I am close to the source by now. Eventually it must rest, and when it does, I will be there to ensnare this beast. Once removed from its host, I am confident that it will wither and die like the weed that it is. Knowing now how difficult it is to find this hidden monster, I am led to believe that the age of my test subjects may be a factor. Younger subjects tend to display less evidence of infection. The madness is so entrenched within the aged frames of my older subjects that it is nearly impossible to discern the sane tissue from the insane. What was I thinking? There's some kind of electronic security system on this door. Youth hides the key to Salvation. Youth hides the key to salvation.
been wandering again. You know you can't come in here. I, uh, um... We've been through this before. If you ever want to get better, you have to let me help you. I know all this must be confusing to you. Even frightening. But this work is going to help so many people. Sick people. People with no hope. No! No! Calm down. You're going to hurt yourself. Those straps can hold a man twice your strength. No! The only good bug is a dead one. Hmm, this thing has some kind of mechanical harness. Wearing this harness, perhaps they'll think I'm one of them. It's worth a try. ID confirmed. Drone guard class, Sector 7. Proceed. Some young Cyclops. I hope he can help me. By the Makers! Grimwall! You're Grimwall! But what are you doing here? Why have you returned to us? I thought Gromna had everything under control. Grimwall? Is that my name? I don't remember much. Just waking up in this hive and having to battle a few insectoids. I had to use this strange device that I found on the large one, just to pass their security forces. It's an ID harness. Gromna built them for the insectoids since they lost their sight. With that on, you look like another bug to them. That's why they're not swarming all over you. Look, my name is Graven. We need to talk more. But until the work slows down, I'm stuck here. Afterwards, I'm going back to my pod. We can meet there. My pod's globe code is Greneser. Use it if you need to get in there for anything. It's some kind of alien child with two eyes and two arms. This monster is also half machine. Who are you? Tick tock. Cyberhead technician. What is your. Function. To integrate cybernetic enhancements to the flesh. Who designed these robotics? Gromna, honorable assistant to Her Majesty. An insectoid pincher. The edges are sharp. A defense mechanism for Greven's pod. Password. Grenasir. Enter. Wonder if Graven has any good crystals. And now. Our breaking story this evening. During a helicopter sweep in the search for another missing child in the troubled remote community of Warrendale, authorities were startled to discover what appears to be a gigantic insect hive attached to Mount Cyteria close to the ancient mechanical ruins. Details are sketchy at this point, but some sources have estimated that the visible portion of the hive is only a small part of the greater whole. More details on this breaking story as it develops. In an attempt to halt the infestation of the insect horde that is sweeping across our nation, leading entomologist Gromna will lead a team to infiltrate and examine the ever-growing hive. When asked why he was risking his own life on this mission, Gromna simply replied that he was willing to sacrifice anything to stop the infestation. When he heard the news, President Agris said, Gromna is truly a great man, and we all wish him much success. Today, 
The nation breathed a collective sigh of relief as word from Grom that finally reached our closest outpost to the hive. Gone for months and presumed dead, it turns out that Gromna's team is not only alive, but they have found a method to slow the horde's infestation. Remaining near the hive, the team will continue their research in an attempt to stop the horde. Hi, Graven. I guess you're not in. You must be out helping Gromna save the world or something. I just wanted to tell you that I love you, and I miss you. And I really look forward to you coming back to me soon. Goodbye, sweetheart. Graven's Tools. A sledgehammer should come in handy. The heater! It's alive! Look, I'm too busy to talk now. The couriers are delivering embers from the furnace at a fantastic rate. I'll meet you later at my pod when they shut the furnace down. If they shut the furnace down. stand to look at these beasts. The insectoids abominable furnace. They're... they're dropping cyclopean babies into the furnace. Hmm. This insect is hooked up for me. Ugh. I can hardly stand to look at these beasts. They are refining fuel for their mechanized parts. The insectoids abominable furnace. The bellows. They are used to fan the flames of the infernal machine. The insects are pumping a bellows to control the furnace. Who are you? <laughs> furnace operator. Why do you ask, guard drone? Why are you here? I'm here to uh, inspect the furnace. It's been suitably repaired, but if Her Majesty needs confirmation, then go ahead and get on with it. Just stay out of the way. We're very busy. What is your function? To regulate the flow of air to the furnace. What is the purpose of this furnace? Are you testing my knowledge? Very well. This is the main power supply of the Hive. It was built by Gromna himself. It maintains the temperature of the Queen's chambers and also is used to smelt the raw ember into a highly concentrated power source. Where does the ember come from? We found deposits of it within the mountain while we were tunneling our way up to the surface. When Gromna joined our cause, he recognized it as a possible power source for cybernetics, if reduced to its purest form. How do you regulate the temperature? It's very complicated. You'd need to be at least the level of operator to understand it, and you are still merely a drone guard. How do I become an operator? An ambitious drone. You are far too young to even be considered for it. I have served the Queen for generations. With age comes respect and station. What about those bellows over there? The assigned drones pump the bellows, regulating the flow of airs 
into the honey. Through that, we control the flames that are used to smelt the ember. Are those... Cyclopean children being thrown in? Don't be alarmed. According to Gramna, they won't pollute the ember. Where do they come from? And why burn them? Does this investigation require me to explain everything to you, drone? Uh, it's a convenient way to dispose of their sickening little bodies once the queen is through with them. Granted, the ashes and smell can be a bit nauseating, but one gets used to them after a while. Hmm. This pipe has been fixed recently, though not too well. A sledgehammer should come in handy. Drones! Stop the bellows! Seal the pipe! To continue pumping with that damage would overheat the furnace! With that bug gone, I can reach the controls. I'll shut down this abominable furnace. The mechanized arm survived the fire. Hmm. I wonder if it can be used against the beasts. Hmm. This is more complex than I imagined. There appear to be many controls, all interrelated. Genocide today, monsters. No more embers will be delivered now. I'm certain I'll find Graven resting in his pod. The insectoid's abominable furnace.
Who designed these robotics? Kramna, honorable assistant to Her Majesty. Where is he? He is within the Queen's chambers. Since it is the Eve of Retribution, there is much preparation required. His plan must be executed perfectly. What plan do you speak of? Your memory banks must be fluctuating. Gromna has seen the error of his kind's ways and has come to aid us in our desire for revenge. With his gift of cybernetics, we shall once again rule the surface. Eve of retribution? Are your memory pathways in need of service? The Eve of Retribution is known by us all. As of tomorrow, we will return to our rightful position as the dominating race of the planet. Under the guise of peace, we shall collect a debt that has been unpaid for decades. How will this gift aid us? Are we not mighty enough to conquer the Cyclops without them? Without the speed of cybernetics, we would be vulnerable to the nuclear fire which the enemy controls, incinerated before we even reach the city. But with the aid of cybernetics, we will be swarming within the walls of the capital before their hands can even reach the launch buttons. The dawn will bring the age of the insectoid. It is inevitable. I require my ID harness to be upgraded. Upon whose authorization will I grant this procedure? Um... You delay in your response. I am busy. Return when you can produce the proper authorization. There you are. I was beginning to get worried. I thought something terrible might happen to you at the furnace. Especially since your memory is gone. No, I don't remember much of anything. I wouldn't even know my own name if you hadn't told me. Every Cyclopean child knows the name of Grimwall. You're the great hero of the War of the One. War of the One? Can you tell me about it? Oh my. You are confused, aren't you? <clears throat> the War of the One was a pivotal point in the history of our people. For years, we had fought the insectoids, neither side gaining ground as the planet was ravaged by countless battles. The Makers, creators of all and of nothing, watched silently for many years before taking action. They spoke to the leaders of both sides through grand visions, declaring that there was to be one final battle for supremacy. The victor would rule the planet, and the defeated race would be forced underground, never to return to the surface again. We won? Yes, thanks to you. You destroyed nearly a third of the troops, all by yourself. If we won, then why are these things back above ground? No one really knows. Actually, no one really believed the story of the War of the One, or thought that there were any insectoids. Until now. That evil machine will be silent for a while. Evil? It's just a furnace, isn't it? The thing was burning children, Graven. Cyclopean children. What? But how can this be? Gromna would never allow such a thing to happen. Gromna? That's the name the bugs were using at the furnace. They said he's giving the orders to burn the children's bodies. That's absurd. He's my mentor. A brilliant entomologist. He'd never... Ento... what? Entomologist. He's our foremost specialist on insects. That's why the Peace Council chose him for this mission. Mission? What mission? What the hell is going on here? We were sent here to examine this hive a few months ago. 
We were captured, but Gromna convinced the Queen to put aside her plans of conquest and negotiate a peace treaty. Since then, it's been peaceful for both sides. In fact, tomorrow is the day that both leaders will meet to sign the treaty. I tell you it's true, Graven. Something is terribly wrong here, and I think that this Gromna person is somehow involved. You must help me. I'm sorry, but I can't. Not unless you have some physical proof to back up these wild accusations. Very well. If proof is what you want, then that's what you'll get. Graven, Chick-Tok requires authorization to upgrade my ID harness. Who can do that? Normally, Gromna is the only one who can authorize such upgrades. But with the increased activity in the Queen's chambers, he remains there almost exclusively. I think we can fool Chick-Tok if I make my position sound important enough. What should I say? Tell him that your authorization comes from Graven, protege of Gromna, honorable assistant to Her Majesty. That should do it. Take my advice. That harness you're wearing won't get you past every security device. You might want to see the cyber technician for an upgrade. I require my ID harness to be upgraded. Upon whose authorization will I grant this procedure? Graven, protege of Gromna, honorable assistant to Her Majesty. Graven, hold while I search my databanks for confirmation. My records indicate that Graven is the assistant to Gromna. However, his authorization alone is not enough. I will need to verify that you are of sufficient age to be placed within the Royal Guard. Proceed to Lim Scanner for positive age identification. Some kind of scanning unit. The furnace operator's mechanical limb. Age requirements verified. Upgrade authorized. Step forward to have ID harness upgraded. Prepare for upgrade treatment. Treatment? What treatment? A treatment. They found a way to slow down the disease. It says here that a Dr. Morgan was ultimately responsible for developing the DNAV treatment. Didn't you study with the Dr. Morgan back in med school? I was still a sophomore when he earned his doctorate. Well, the treatment's called HOPE. It's supposed to decelerate the growth of the DNAV, almost doubling the lifespan of affected children. The Aztecs found a way to survive the plague of Quetzalcoatl without conventional modern medicine. <sighs> Well, hey, if Morgan is close to a cure, a true cure, then maybe he can use another set of hands. Maybe it's time to pack up here and go home. Ah, there's a fire in my brain! Royal Guard class confirmed. Enter. Yes! Cyclops babies! In bottles? Dr. Morgan? What test is this? Ah, Max. You're just in time. This is a test of the subject's... threshold. The serum will travel directly to the neurotransmitters of the brain and, without actually harming the monkey, cause it to feel excruciating pain all over its body. What? Well, that's not an experiment! It's torture! What possible purpose- When you outrank me in lab years, Max, you can question the methods. 
I see the potential fruits of our research, and that justifies the means. A valuable lesson in scientific research, Max. In layman's terms, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. I don't understand. If allowed to mature, these vile insectoid grubs would overrun the world. A tube or tunnel of some sort. I wonder how it can be activated. This Cyclops is half bug. Who are you? Grit Gritza. Gritza? Yes, that's my name, Gang Clang. Where are you from? From. Dum. Where are you from? From. Team. Reem. Team? What team is that? Search. Research team. Sent to examine insectoids. Gramna. The leader, the betrayer. Gromna? He was your leader and betrayer? How did he betray you? Betrayer? He did this to me. My body. Not Cyclops anymore. Half beast. His experiments. Left me off. For I am a freak now. What has he done to you? What experiments? His quest wants to live forever. These insects as the answer. What? I don't understand what answer. Bastard! <laughs> what are you doing here? M -m My duty to the Queen. What duty is that? To tend the young ones. They are fragile children. So young, bottles of joy. These bottles have children in them? Clones, grumners, pests. No, my strength will break the bottle. I need something to cut it free, Grap. An insectoid pincher. The edges are sharp. seen your fellow team members in the Queen's chambers. Gromna has interchanged their lower bodies with insectoid anatomy. What? I haven't seen them since. We must save them! I'm sorry, Graven, but their minds are gone. It's too late. May the Makers preserve their souls. I brought you the proof you asked for, Graven. Are you going to help me? By the Makers. Yes, of course. I suppose we should search Gromna's pod. Come on, I have his globe code. What's the globe code, Graven? Immortal. That's the word to unlock the door. Password. Immortal. Enter.
What are those? They appear to be schematics of some kind. Judging by the shape and general mass, I'd say they were diagrams of the Great Machine. Great Machine? What's that? It's the huge round piece of machinery that sits on the edge of the hive. Some say it was left there by the makers themselves. Others think that it's a power source of some type. It used to emit a weird humming noise, but now it remains silent. Hmm. What? According to these notes, two parts may have been removed to aid the insectoids. I need to visit the great machine and see for myself. Rumnus notes. They say that a sound generator will open the worm transport tube. These designs. I do not understand them. Mutilated grubs? What is Gromna doing with them? Gromna is clearly insane! This pillow appears to be rather lumpy. A locked cabinet. I suspect that the traitor keeps something important within. Aha! A key! A key! Hmm. A control device. It seems to be generating an odd sound. This would appear to be the worm transport tube mentioned in Gromna's schematics. A sound generator. Must I pass through the bowels of the monster? Hello, my children. Yes, father is here. <laughs> This is truly the mother of all evil. Children in cages! Everything I see in this place enrages me more! What have they done to this poor fellow? He's got an insectoid body. Who are you? I am... Gr Grandor. And you... you are... I am Grimwall. G Gr Grimwall the hero? Too late to sa save us n now, hero. Where are you from? R research team. S s sent to investigate the insect t toids. Sent by who? C Council of Peace sent us to s stop the p p plague of insectoids. Plague? You mean the insects were going to take over the cities below? Yes. Uh, until Gromna came up with his plan. You mean the peace treaty? <laughs> Peace treaty? Uh, hell no! He's helping the bu the bugs get stronger with those cybernetics. They're g going to attack the 
during the meeting for the treaty. What? I must warn the Council before it's too late. Already. Already too l late. Too, too far away from the city. Our p poor people are doomed. Gromna is a traitor! T t traitor and a butcher. He d d did this to to me. Said he didn't w didn't want me to run run away. S s said I s stay here forever. Team, what team is that? C Council of Peace sent us to s stop the. Plague of insectoids. What are you doing here? I f feed the clones. These aren't real children? R real enough for the queen to to feed on. By the makers. The m m makers cannot help cannot help us now. Even the doorway is blocked by a living wall of worms. The grubs make noise. For what purpose? These grubs are making some kind of faint noise. I wonder... Ugh. Infernal machinery! This looks like part of the great machine, but I can't move it! She's half bug, but she still seems aware as a cyclops. Who are you? Ungarella. I'm surprised to see another cyclops in the hive. Especially in the Queen's chambers. You seem familiar to me. Do I know you? I am Grimwall. The Grimwall? Of the war? But how can this be? It must be a sign from the Makers. What do you do here? I tend to the clones, monitoring their life. Signs. When they are near the end, I must call for a drone to remove it and carry its body down to the furnace. Then another drone brings up another clone. I do what I can to make their short lives a little less painful. It saddens me to see them suffer so. How does this thing work? It's basically a large transfusion machine. Blood is drawn out of the clones and fed to the queen. Is there any way to shut it down? Not that I know of. Gromna built it himself with some strange parts. Only he knows how it truly works. Where are you from? The city, of course. I was part of Grona's research team before he betrayed us. I don't understand. How did Gromna betray your team? It's a little complicated, but I've managed to piece it all together. 
I can tell you the whole story if you'd like. I don't have much time, but I'd like to hear your story. I'll keep it brief. After we were captured, the Queen was set to execute us. But Grona convinced the Queen to let us live. Although now I wish we had been killed swiftly instead of suffering through Grona's so-called surgeries. I don't understand. How does this surgery fit into the insectoid's plans? It doesn't. Grona has his own agenda. He seeks to unlock the Secrets of immortality. The insectoids have a greater metabolism than us, so he hopes to merge the two species and then use cybernetic enhancements in order to live forever. We're his experiments, his failures. We've been assigned to work here until we die. Why do you stay here? Why not just escape? We are part insectoid. We must obey the Queen's will, whether we want to or not. I suppose it doesn't matter anyway. One of the unfortunate side effects of merging our two species is Dementia. Soon, I'll be quite mad, just like the rest. I need something to stop this machine. Only then can I disengage and remove it. Graven's Tools. Hmm. A piece of machinery. I hope this is what Graven wanted. A sound generator. Sorry, this flimsy stuff wasn't made to support my weight. Crap. Have you figured out the purpose of the machine? Part of it. But I need time to properly study it. Gromna has removed two pieces from it. Generators of some kind. I need to attach the missing pieces to get the machine running again. Unfortunately, only Gromna knows where they are. A piece of machinery. I hope this is what Graven wanted. <laughs> Oof! Where did you find this? It was powering some type of machine that drained the blood out of the children and fed the Queen. This is awful! How could I have been so wrong about Kromna? DNA test cycle initiated. Perfect! Exactly. No! Molecular cohesion negative. Damn it! What is it? It appears to be a miniature wormhole. Where does it lead? Nowhere right now. Think of this as a hallway with only one door open. Until another door can be opened, this doesn't lead anywhere. What about the second missing piece? That could be it. Wherever it is, you must hurry and find it before the peace treaty tomorrow. Something tells me that it's nothing more than a clever disguise for a more sinister plot.
A sound generator. I'll have to climb up there somehow. After long ages of waiting, the time has come. Today you assemble as outsiders, invaders. Tomorrow, your troops will sweep down upon the city in a murderous wave of retribution. For too long, you have known suffering. You have dwelt beneath the surface and watched your aggressors live in lands where you once lived. Will you remain underground forever? Can you endure this terrible injustice for one more day? For well, I am one of them. I too have been oppressed by your enemy. They laughed at me and my work. The very work which has given you your new cybernetic enhancements. The technology which will mow down all opposition in the coming war. The work which will allow you to overrun the capital city of Gronterra and assume your rightful place as rulers of this planet. Your planet! Your time has come. Tomorrow's end will see the end of the Cyclopean Age and the dawn of the insectoids! The insectoid queen! I will not rest until she is destroyed! An image of the Cyclops planet. I must not let these bugs destroy my people. Make your speeches now, traitor. You won't have breath for long. These controls are similar to those Graven used to create the portal. <laughs> My god, that's it! All along, it's been so simple! Could it be? My god, that's it! All along, the answer has been right here! Right in front of my eyes the whole time! Now what? The whole damn hive will be bearing down on us any second now! Hold on, I figured it out. The second piece serves as a compass for the wormhole. With this I can open a doorway anywhere! I'm setting the coordinates for the chambers of the Peace Council. When we tell them about Gromna, They'll launch a preemptive nuclear strike against the hive. That's it. You've done some incredible work, Max. It's really a shame. Now where am I? Cyclops? Bugs? Mother? All of these monsters must mean something, but what? A woman's corpse. I'll be in a bag soon, too, if I don't get out of here. Need to get out of here. That door is the only way. Beware, Max. The closer you come to reaching your goal, the more danger you are in. Someone seeks to keep you here with us forever. One who will do anything to keep you from leaving the asylum. 
Why? Who conspires against me? I can only say that if you leave, it will mean this person's downfall. But your time is short. Waste not fruitless questions on me. The air grows thick with frost, and soon I must return to my eternal slumber. It, it, it's getting cold. The temperature is dropping. They want you to sleep, like me, forever. F forever You must escape this cold tomb, for there are other secrets frozen in time. Must open the door and get out of here. What the hell are you doing? Excuse me? Cutting my research department in half? Pulling most of my funding? Despite the fact that my department, my research is coming remarkably close to a cure! Oh, your research. May I remind you that the Mercy Foundation was created around the success of my hope drug, not vague promises of a cure? Rather than wasting resources on an entirely new path, you need to channel your energies toward making the hope drug better. I thought that a few cutbacks would communicate this to you. Maybe you're not as bright as I thought. You know, I think I figured you out. You're not interested in a cure. You just want hope to bring you more prestige, more money. Oh, you smart bastard. Give me back my department, otherwise I'll... I'll leave. I'll take my research with me and find a company that's more concerned with finding a cure than filling its pockets. I... I can't believe that your opinion of me is so low, Max. We're friends. You're blowing the whole thing out of proportion, taking this personally. Your sister didn't die of DNA V, Max. I'm... Uh, I apologize. No, it, it's all right. Those cutbacks are based solely on existing statistics. The truth is that it's difficult to measure the success of your research against the proven methods of the HOPE treatment. Look, you don't have to leave Mercy to continue with your project. I'll look over the numbers again. We'll work something out. An empty brass urn. A book of matches. I need something to bust through this wall. Dr. Morgan has an iron bust of himself. <laughs> Pretentious. An iron bust of Morgan. An iron bust of Morgan. Yes! I smell gas. Must be an open valve nearby. Pipe valve. A pipe U joint. Lord knows how many bodies have gone into this oven.
a bunch of tools in here. A monkey wrench. The tag on this one says nine. There are no names on these tags, this just says six. The tag on this body says seven. The tag on this body says two. No, maybe something else. How do I start up this gruesome thing? Hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. This isn't anyone I know. A glass eye. Don't think the owner will miss it. An empty brass urn. have frozen shut. This pipe is cold. A monkey wrench. A pipe U joint. That ought to defrost this whole building. It feels much warmer in here. Someone's alive in there. An old man. He looks cold. Who are you? My name's Arthur. Arthur Patrick. Yes, that's it. What are you doing in the drawer? Less. Last thing I remember, I was taking a nap in the courtyard, and then they were dragging me to some weird laboratory. On the rooftop? Uh, could be. I don't know for sure it was raining. It smelled blood. Dr. Morgan was there. He, he looked at me and s said I was too damn old for his purposes, and I thought, I, I remember he, he was holding a human head. And then, I think I fainted, I... I they must have thought I was dead, I... Next thing I, I knew, I was in that drawer, and scared all the hell. Being in that drawer is enough to scare anyone. Darn right. Dark and closed in, terrible cold. God, that awful scratching. It was a bit chilly in there, wasn't it? Chilly? I damn near froze my ass off. Started to fall asleep. Must have dozed off until you came by. I... Did you turn up the heat? Yes, I did. Well, it's, it's nice here now. Thank you, Sonny. Scratching? What exactly was it? Can't say for sure. Uh, just remember hearing these awful screeching and scraping noises nearby. Nearby where? Outside? Yeah, it's kind of disorienting in there, you know. It sounded muffled, but I, I guess the sound was coming from another drawer. Morgan, he was holding a head? Sure, a stack of Bibles. I saw it. His arms were red with blood, and he was swinging around the head as he was talking, kind of gesturing with it, you know. It, 
he was really yelling at the two orderlies. Some, some patient got loose or something. I, I don't know more than that because he fainted dead away at that point. This drawer is empty. Empty. Wait a second. There are scratches all over the inside. It's dark in here. I can't quite make out what these scratches are. Hmm. Matches. Now I just need some cigarettes. These scratches don't look arbitrary. Was someone trying to communicate something? Now what? A glass eye. Don't think the owner will miss it. Well, that was an eye-opening experience. Hmm, this door is locked. Difficult to read. Isn't there an old trick about rubbing soot on worn carvings to make them legible? Interesting style. At least it's not a gargoyle. The stone says, Eric R. Get to work, you maggots. The sculptor conveniently forgot her shirt. What's she holding? It moves! Speak to me, tree! Lest your eyes nest with birds! <sighs> Why have you summoned me, stranger? Normally it is the man with the glass eye who speaks the words of commandment. I'm afraid he's dead, but he left behind the cryptic message that led me to you. Very well. What is it that you seek? Who are you? My name is Malus Ionsis. I am the guardian of the light, protector of the grove. How do you guard the light? It's all around us. 
Fool! The light. It is housed within the heart of ancient mighty warriors. They alone understand the true meaning of sacrifice. I don't understand. What do you sacrifice? Freedom. Movement. Growth. My limbs ache to stretch upwards into the nurturing sunlight. Yet I must remain steadfast, lest my trunk stray from its position in the grove. I am he who must remain in place. Why must the grove be protected? Greed. Pride. Evil. These aspects of humanity threaten all life. Thus I remain, and none may pass. Save one. Who? The Creator. The Creator? Yes. By his name only shall I be swayed from my place. Brass urn filled with ashes. Not from here. The ashes show faint scratches. A name, Paul Stark. In the name of your creator, Paul Stark, I command you to move aside. Paul Stark, the Creator. He who planted my seed and gave me life. In his name, I do as commanded. Strange place for such a thing. Is that a crystal heart? Strange and wonderful prism. It seems to focus the light that passes through it. There's a nice warm beam of light coming through. Strange and wonderful prism. It seems to focus the light that passes through it. Yes, the light! It's opening the door! Well, Max, I don't know how you found me, but you're too late. I'm leaving now, leaving you here with the rest of the dead people. Damn you, Morgan! Statue of an Aztec warrior, who looks almost lifelike. The secret to activating the device appears to be the use of five distinct symbols. Their cosmic structure was simple, earth below in the form of twin mountains, the sun and stars above. Over these, another world exists, one beyond this life. There's a number one written next to this passage. A phone! Oh, just my luck, it's dead. Huh, looks like an Aztec calendar. But something's wrong. There's a device hooked up to it. This isn't a normal Aztec calendar. Some of the parts move.
What the? These people have called me. I heard their voices. The Wall of Sorrow. Images which tell the story of this village. Here is the woman whose magic summoned me. Old woman, what is your station? By the great spirits, you have arrived. I thought your arrival to be merely a vision, but here you stand, O oh, Mech, the holy warrior. Praise the gods. Still your tongue, old crone. I asked your station. What is it? Forgive me. My name is Titio. I am the village oracle. Why have you come to greet me, old one? Where is the village chieftain? He is repairing the village, Great One. Forgive us, for we are few in number. What of this village? Why was I summoned? It is Quetzalcoatl, Holy One. He has returned. What nonsense is this? He sits on his majestic throne in the heavens, not in this pathetic dung heap of a village. No, oh, no, no, Sacred One. He truly has returned, just as prophesied on the Wall of Sorrow. If you speak the truth, then I must see him. Where is he? He stands atop the angry mountain, your grandness. He is using his magic to bring forth the blood of the land to kill us all. Your tale told of the shaven head Otanmi warriors. Where are they? Quetzalcoatl slaughtered them as if they were children. And now their shades roam the land, trapped here by his wicked magic. Shades, eh? Can they not fight still in these new forms? Nay, fearless one. They are but lost souls, trapped between life and death. Their inability to battle their foe has driven them mad. They rant only crazed things in the voices of ghosts. The Jaguar Temple still stands? Yes. It withstood both the flood and the rock slides. He intends to melt the very stones of the temple itself with the blood of the angry mountain, destroying what's left of the village. A waterfall, demonstrating the raw power of nature's gods. Clearly, this is the temple of water. This water is impure. They have honored Quetzalcoatl with this statue, and he repays them with destruction. Many have been sacrificed on this spot. Some for good, some for evil. Big head. Scalding lake of lava. There is the evil god himself. Quetzalcoatl, why have you returned to this place? Omek, oh, I should have known you'd come. 
You follow your God's commands like the dog that you are. Go back down to your followers and wait for your death as they do. You are powerless against me here! You dare speak to me in such a tone? I have enough power to handle the likes of you. Ha! <laughs> Empty threats from a cowardly warrior. Why do you seek to destroy those that worshipped you? You were their greatest king! Ah! They are loyal to none but themselves. Soon after my death, they stop offering sacrifice, and now they will pay with their lives! Why have you left your heavenly throne? For a god to return to this land is a disgrace! I am more than a god. I am a warrior. That idle throne is an empty chair that threatens to devour my eternal soul. I will conquer this world one village at a time until all are destroyed! And then what? When there is nothing left to conquer, what will you do? I grow with the power of the souls I consume. When this world has been stripped of all its souls, I will be the most powerful god of all! I will conquer the heavens! <laughs> You fool. You cannot touch me. In death I have gained much power. The souls of the Shaven Head upon me feed my magic. He is too powerful. I must find a way to destroy the evil one. Perhaps I may find some magical talismans nearby. This one appears to have died very young. Spirit, what say you? One battle, died, never to see honor on battlefield. What name did you go by in this world, fallen hero? Xylonen, the youngest warrior of clan, unproven. Was this but your first battle? And last. Never to fight again. What was your station as warrior, spirit? Youngest of clan. Fierce. I fought, but no avail. Dead. Same as Honor comes with courage, young spirit. Your courage at such a young age is honorable. Walk with head held high. Cannot dishonor or die in first battle. Curse me for eternity. This spirit is restless for justice. Spirit, what say you? Village doomed my dishonor. What name did you go by in this world, fallen hero? Omitok, the fierce one. How did you earn such a title, Shade? Fought like wild jaguar in battle. Fear not, young warrior. The village is not doomed as long as I draw breath. So thought our clan. Quick to battle. Did we run? Quick to die. What was your station as warrior, spirit? New blood. Young to tribe. Yet not youngest. Older than Zilonen.
big totem pole. An unhappy spirit. Spirit, what say you? Art totem. Art demands to stay true. What name did you go by in this world, fallen hero? Epic Hawk. Hunt the waters. Bounty of the seas. A fisherman? Yes, and warrior, and husband. Why do you stand here, fallen one? What does this totem mean to you? Stand where I fall. Temple of wind, protect, even in death. I mean no harm to the temple. I am Olmec, holy warrior. Lies and deceptions, like the evil one, none may pass. To destroy! You are confused, lost warrior. I speak the truth. Quetzalcoatl is my enemy as well. Step aside so that I may visit the temple. Prove. Prove words. True. Act of faith. Perform the test before I grant passage. Who was your wife? She has my heart. I meant her name. What is her name? You not harm her, you will. What was your station as a warrior, spirit? Most sacred warrior, you must find blood that springs from a holy heart, and a heart which does not bleed. Place these two offerings in the bowls before you, and then you may enter the Temple of the Jaguar. This must be the Jaguar Temple. This must be the Jaguar Temple. This must be the Jaguar Temple. His soul still dwells here. Spirit, what say you? Shame. Eternal shame. Died in vain. What name did you go by in this world, fallen hero? I said all. Error of war. Son of the Village. Witch. Why do you hang your head in shame, brave one? 
could not defeat one warrior. All our clan failed to stop just one man. What was your station as warrior spirit? Veteran of many battles, younger brother of Mixcaiatl. You are the son of Tetsukatl? Yes. He too has been slain by the evil god. Spirit, what say you? Failed. All. Could not defeat one. Do you judge yourself a failure? How can that be when you have died in honor on the battlefield? What name did you go by in this world, fallen hero? Mixcoatl, Elder's Law Chief, Elder Brother to Witzelop. You were the War Chief? Yes, victorious in many battles. What was your station as warrior, spirit? War chief, eldest warrior, and leader of clan. A large statue. Violent earth magic has made it unstable. <laughs> A river of the earth's blood, flowing freely now that the statue has moved. I accept your challenge, Shade. What will be this test of faith? If ever given, wife. A gift for your wife? Of what kind? Lemmers, circles, neck. A necklace? Simple enough. I will find one for her and... Carved stone. It seems to be a piece of something greater. Clearly, this is the Temple of Water.
Clearly, this is the Temple of Water. What does this noble warrior seek? Spirit, what say you? Bitter. Defeat. Curse to Rome. What name did you go by in this world, fallen hero? Sandival. This warrior. Clan. Shaven head. The Shaven Head Otonmi? Yes! Savage Destroyers! What was your station as warrior spirit? In my prime? Older than Tivitak? Younger than Hutsala? A tree growing in the lava. Huts of the ruined village. Simple pottery. Can one woman's sorrow be so great? Woman, what say you? Why do you weep so? <laughs> Forgive me, O oh Holy One, for not showing you the proper respect. But I am racked with grief over the loss of my husband. He died in the battle with Quetzalcoatl. Who was your husband? His name was Tepic Talk. He was a warrior, but also the village's best fisherman. He lived off the gifts of the sea and devoutly worshipped the goddess of water. The cool walls of the water temple were to his liking, and he often spent his days in deep meditation and prayer there. I have seen that the water temple is flooded. Yes, by the evil one's doing. Quetzalcoatl called down a wave of water to destroy it, but it still stands proudly in the water. Why does this woman worry so? Woman, what say you? Olmec, you have come to us. Thank the gods for our prayers have been answered. Yes, your prayers reach me and I am here. What is your station? I am the wife of the chieftain. Why was your husband spared Quetzalcoatl's wrath? He was praying inside the temple of the jaguar when the evil one came. By the time the echoes of death reached him, the battle was over. He emerged to find nearly the entire village destroyed. He was bound by tradition to become chieftain. Thus he cannot attack Quetzalcoatl, and now he broods in a dark mood. He sees himself a coward for not being able to die in battle with the others. Who remains in the village? There are but a handful of us left. My husband does what he can to repair the damage of the walls of the huts, but his mind is elsewhere. 
the death of our beloved daughter weighs heavily upon him. You speak of tradition as though it is undesirable. Your husband should be honored to be chieftain. But Olmec, oh wise one, it was never his desire to become chieftain, especially not this way. Working with the earth and revealing the secrets it hid inside brought him great joy. What happened during the battle? At first, when we saw our revered king back from the land of the dead, we were overjoyed. We thought he had come back to lead us to great victories. Instead, he came to destroy us. Although our warriors fought fiercely, Quetzalcoatl scattered them like broken twigs. After they had been killed, he unleashed his dark magic on us. She was killed in the battle? My husband insists that she was crushed beneath the boulders which destroyed the village walls. You speak as though you disbelieve your own words. I cannot help myself. I somehow feel that she still lives. What magics did he wield? He caused a massive wave to come down and crush the Temple of Water. He caused the earth to shake violently. The mountain broke apart and almost crushed all the huts, bearing the Temple of Wind. Only the Temple of the Jaguar withstood his power. This lowly worker appears strong and proud. You there, what is your station? <laughs> I was the stonemason. Now I am village chief. What are you? And why do you enter this village? I am Olmec, holy warrior. You dare address me in that tone? I do. You may frighten the others, but you'll get no such satisfaction from me. Where were you when we needed you most? Your arrival now means nothing to me. You're too late. You say I am late, but you are wrong. Is that so? My precious daughter lies crushed beneath these rocks. The day Quetzalcoatl arrived, I prayed to your god with all my heart. And you come to us now? The warriors are dead. The temples are in ruins. My daughter is dead. You say your daughter is dead. How do you know? She was in her hut when the rocks fell. Look around you. Death is everywhere. I have lost everything that is dear to me. You say you were the stonemason? Yes, that is my trade. Like my father before me, and his father before him, I work the earth, shaping it to my will. I am a simple craftsman who now rules what's left of this village. A heavy burden on my weary shoulders. There are worse fates, Mason. I know. I have seen what happens to those who oppose Quetzalcoatl's rule. His punishment is swift and severe, in death as it was in life, when he ruled this village as king. Yes, but he was just and true back then, not this abomination which has returned to destroy us. We revered him when he was of flesh and bone, and upon his death, we crafted a tomb as a monument to his greatness. I myself crafted the stones and jewelry he was adorned with. Mason, I would have a word with you. I have spoken with the spirit of Tepetak, warrior and husband to Kalkihut. The fisherman? His spirit remains here? Yes. You have the necklace that belongs to his wife. Give it to her, or I will shatter your limbs like twigs. Very well. Tell your spirit I will deliver his gift. An empty copper bowl. It must have been used for sacrifices. A truly venerable woman. Old woman, what say you? <laughs> I see the oracle was successful in summoning you. Although at this point, 
I don't see much use in it. The damage has been done. You have no purpose here. What do you mean by that, bitter crone? I am Olmec. I fight for the gods themselves. You sound as zealous as my husband. The fool. What man would be mad enough to wed your sour tongue, old one? Ha! Ah. Tezakatl. The witch is my husband. He fathered two fine warriors with me, and now he runs to meet death's embrace. Meanwhile, I must sit obediently while he throws away his life on a fool's errand. What errand do you speak of? He plans on fighting that bastard. Undead king using his small magic. He is doomed and will die in vain. Where are your two sons? Did they die in battle? Yes. Quetzalcoatl shattered their bodies as though they were made of straw. Soon my fool husband will join them, and I'll be truly alone. What is that you are mixing? Nothing important, holy one. Just a simple balm for my aching bones. Age has not been kind to me. I have spoken with the Mason Dead One. He will deliver the gift as promised. Honorable Olmec, truth in your breast. I am grateful, temple awaits. is open to me. Boulders are no match for the mighty Olmec. Ugh. Be the stone mason's daughter. Your parents miss you greatly. I will take you home. Kotulkyu, my daughter, you have returned from death. Fool. She was trapped within the temple. Had you not been so stubborn and full of self-pity, you would have realized that. Oh, my precious daughter! I'm so sorry. Go see your mother. She misses you terribly. A large crystal. I can see something inside. These gongs produce music.
the wind totem. Another hut. The air around it smells of magic. Is this old one preparing for battle? Old man, what say you? I say that the end is near. Quetzalcoatl will destroy us all, lest I find one who can bring me the pod of might. What name do you go by, Ancient One? My name is Tezekatol. I am the village's last hope. It is my duty as village witch to destroy this devil who plagues us. I see the temples are nearly destroyed by Quetzalcoatl's dark magic. Yes, the totems may be in grave danger. What totems are you speaking of? The statues sheltered within the temples. These statues represent the purity of the gods themselves. I believe Quetzalcoatl fears them, else why would he seek to destroy them? Your wife mourns for you, witch. She knows what I plan and fears the future without me. She has seen our two warrior sons die at the hands of Quetzalcoatl, and soon she will bury me. What is this pod you speak of? The sacred pod of might. It contains the seeds I require to finish my spell. Yet, there is no way to reach it. Why is that? It clings to the joining tree, surrounded by liquid fire. Not even your stone form could withstand its heat. How does the tree survive if it is surrounded by fire? It is magic as is the pod that grows on its mighty trunk. However, the magic is fading, and the limbs will soon wither and burn. There must be some way to reach it. Perhaps the ancient rite of the warrior may be the answer. Rite of the warrior? What will that old magic accomplish? It is old indeed, wise one. Though not practiced for many generations, it is rumored to have the ability to make a warrior impervious to the elements. Then I will go through the trials. Perform it. Forgive me, sacred one. I cannot. I don't remember the complete ceremony. However, the stonemason knows it. He is the village chief now, and is over at the huts. What spell are you preparing? It is called the Spirit Fire. It creates a mystic energy wave formed by the souls of the dead. Why do you sit here, idle in the village instead of fighting? What kind of coward are you? Harsh words, your holiness. But I am not merely sitting here. I am meditating to gain the power needed to combat his awful magic. How do you expect to defeat a god, little man? I don't. He is very strong. I cannot possibly hope to defeat him. However, 
If I anger him enough with my spell, he will spend precious energy on me. That should sufficiently weaken him enough for you to defeat him. You would sacrifice yourself for the village? It must be done. I have found your daughter, Mason. It is time for me to undergo the rite of the warrior. You are truly honorable, Olmec. Please find it in your heart to forgive me. I should never have doubted you. Enough groveling, chieftain. Get on with it. Y yes, of course. There are two stages to the ritual. The first, an act of bravery and heroism. You've already shown that by returning my daughter to me. Second, you must recite the names of the warriors who have come before you, in order of their lineage. I'd like to undergo the second stage of the ritual. Do you know all six names of the warriors who came before you? Yes, I do. Then let us begin, Olmec. Name the six warriors, starting with the youngest and ending with the eldest. Zilunen! Ometok! Tipetok, Sentiotl, Huitzilop, Mixquotl. You are most wise, Grand Olmec. You are now ready for the ancient magics of the land, handed down to me by my father and his father before him. To protect you from the mighty elements, I must combine your stone flesh with my blood and the magics of the earth. This will create a temporary magical barrier between yourself and the forces of nature. How long will it last? Not long. You must be swift in your quest. Blood of the holy. Flesh of the warrior. Married to the heart of the land in a union of protection and power. Hear my prayers for divine conjuring. Bring forth the sacred magics of the deep earth to shield this noble warrior from the harsh elements. It is done. Go forth and fulfill your destiny, Olmec. The fate of our village lies in your hands. An empty copper bowl. It must have been used for sacrifices. These are the sacred fires. This must be the Pod of Might. I have the Pod of Might, old one. Here, work your magic. Very good. Thank you, Sacred One. I will begin at once. I go to fulfill my destiny. May my sacrifice save the village.
Although honorable in your sacrifice, the village is still in danger, old one. Quetzalcoatl has powerful magic at his disposal. M mask Mask? What mask do you speak of? Death mask. His power c comes from it. Where is it? B below the maze. <laughs> A crystal heart. The candles give off a powerful fragrance. Clearly, this is the Temple of Water. Images carved in stone. Somehow these hold the key to the Water Temple. Clearly, this is the Temple of Water. Ah, it is some kind of mirror, but what is its purpose? The Water Totem. A ruby fish. Its blood-like coloring must indicate something important. Witch Doctor's corpse. His blood flows freely from wounds that will not heal. An empty copper bowl. It must have been used for sacrifices. A sacrificial bowl. It is caked with dried blood. An empty sacrificial bowl. A ruby fish. Its blood-like coloring must indicate something important. A sacrificial bowl filled with the blood of the witch doctor.
Holy One, this blood is sacred indeed, but still, a second offering is required. The heart which does not bleed. Find this, and the door of the temple shall open. A crystal heart. The offerings are accepted. The Jaguar Temple door opens before sacred Olmec. The Jaguar Totem. <laughs> Murals of ancient heroes. What? No painting of the mighty Olmec? Hmm. Stone wheels. Set to turn for some strange purpose. Jaguar's power is revealed. The wind totem, the jaguar, the water totem. The jaguar totem. The wind totem. Together, you son of a bitch! Molecular cohesion affirmative. Yes! 
Yes! Test cycle downloaded to DVD. Encryptor sequence completed. System shutdown activated. This looks like a release switch. This lever locks the gate in place. The death mask of Quetzalcoatl. My poor baby, you had an awful fall. I'm so glad you've come home. Home? Well, of course, silly. You did want to come home, didn't you? Yes, I, I wanted to... Well, then that's that. Hush now, Max. When you fell down the chimney, you bumped your head, and now you're a little confused, that's all. My... My head hurts. I remember hitting it. That's right, dear. You hit your head on the chimney. Now don't give it another thought. I'll take care of you. Chimney? No, I... I hit it... No, I hit it on... In... My... My... Car? No, of course not, dear. You just bumped... Yes, my car. I was driving and... The brakes... But Max... We've been waiting for you for so long. Don't leave now. We? Who? Why, me and little Sarah, of course. <laughs> Who else would it be, silly? But... but that's impossible. Sarah is dead! Sarah! 
Max is home. Max, you're home. You're home. I missed you. You're alive. My God, Sarah, you're. No, you're dead. <laughs> Your tenacity is quite remarkable, you know. Your doctor tells me that you should have died in the car wreck. I wish things could have worked out differently, Max, but they didn't. You leave me little choice, old friend. Did you honestly expect me to sit by while you went public with your cure? No. I've worked much, much too hard to allow that. I guess this is goodbye, Max. I'm truly sorry it had to end like this. Farewell. Quetzal Quattle murdering an entire village. Morgan trying to kill me. Now I see the connections. None of this is real. Those things will shred my feet if I try to walk on them. An Aztec statue. Who am I now? I have to hold on to my real identity. I am Max. A wall of impaled pumpkins. The pumpkins appear to light up, but why? Oh my god, they... they must have been illusions. Everything is... A human skull. This headstone says, Travis W. Nice goddamn cat. The stone reads, Jetta Driscoll? What does this headless apparition want from me? A human skull. A stone crypt. It came up out of the ground. Cement lid looks heavy. Sarah's doll. A Grimwall comic book. The head of the angelic statue. A bridge of thorns. Ouch. An Aztec statue. Grimwall comic book. 
This game appears to be a test of strength. Hit the board and ring the bell. Got it! Why are these teeth flashing colors? I'm not putting my hand in the fire. I'm not putting my hand in the fire. Aztec statue. nose has popped out. Now there's a small hole. Sarah's doll. The clown nose broke to reveal a small hole. The angelic statue's left wing. A stained glass window. An empty pedestal. Something's missing here. The head of the angelic statue. Come on, come on. No, maybe something else. The angelic statue's left wing. No good. stone head. It seems to transmit energy to the statue. Ugh. I'm not strong enough to move this thing. These plates on the floor look like they could move. A crystal monolith. There's something inside. An Aztec statue. Ah, their wailing could shatter my eardrums. piece of the angelic statue was trapped in the crystal. 
bright wing of the angelic statue. Sarah's doll. Spirits hovering above the dead warriors. I have to cut that cord in order to get the piece of statue down. Strange machinery. There are four control levers. <clears throat> the disruptor is working. The grubs have moved away from the grate. A honeycomb. Looks like something is inside. An insect mandible. A grate in the floor. There's a tunnel underneath. Sarah's... I have to cut that cord in order to get the piece of statue down. An insect mandible. Torso of the angelic statue. This machine generates a strange noise. It seems to be some kind of disruptor. But it's still not complete. The an Better. But it's still not complete. Right wing of the angelic statue. Better. But it's still not complete. The head of the angelic statue. The statue is reassembled, and a portal has opened. The real world must be close, I can feel it. I'd better move quickly.
Have to get through those columns. The real world lies beyond. This thing won't let me pass. What am I supposed to do? Seek the truth. Truly a great warrior. The strength. No more games, Morgan. You. The shadow is gone. You failed, Morgan! I'm gonna live! Enough games, Max. This ends here, now! Do you know that the poison will soon condemn you to darkness forever? Lost to your doomed world. Lost to your wife. Lost to your unborn child. It's over.